All right. Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast, and I'm just checking in on you. Checking to see how your week's going, and uh, we got the video going, so that means I have a very special guest, and uh, this guy, I don't know what to tell you about this guy, other than he is, when you think comedian's comedian, comics, comic, whatever you want to say, the guy that makes all the other comics stop what they're doing, stand at the back of the room to see what this guy's going to say. Um, he's got a new special out called Hashtag, was it Cancel Holtzman? <laughs> The one and only, the legend, Brian Holtzman. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, you like that? <laughs> Dude, um, I don't know what to say to you, man. I have been a, The first time I saw you was when I was just a wee lad, um, the late 90s. I went down to the comedy store, and I saw you on stage and you had this leather jacket on you were telling the crowd is made out of baby seal (laughs) and that you you had aids you took a bath and you got over it and just just the most irreverent craziest shit and yet you were still killing and uh i don't know it's just an honor to have you on here and it's an honor to promote your new special thank you thanks for having me uh bill bill Uh yeah, you can call me Bill. <laughs> can I call you William? Yeah, you can call me William. <laughs> so um, let's get into it, man. You're 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 uh, you're living in Texas, or you're you're Cal- your little little. Back I went out f- to the new mothership, Joe Rogan's new club, the mothership. I've seen it. Yes, you were there. Quite the joint. Yes, uh, he modeled it right after the 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 comedy store, for good reason. You know why fix it if it's not broke? It works really well, and but I've. Uh, and I go back and forth, yeah. How, how do you like Texas? Yeah, I go back and forth. <laughs> That's why I go back and forth. No, Texas is great, but uh, it's Texas. I know Texas doesn't have state tax, okay? So I get that aspect of it. But I feel like if you if you weren't born there... When that summer heat comes, I mean, it's bad enough out here. It's but like that, Southeast that, Asia. That fucking, I, I feel like I'm paying state tax out here for no humidity. <laughs> like, that shit that... Or mosquitoes. <laughs> oh, my God. Or, like, fucking hurricanes and all of that. Like, that's really, like, kind of something that fascinates me right now, where people think that they're going to move somewhere and all of these these problems are not going to affect them. And it's just like, we're all in this... We're all in this together, so it's just like I don't know where you're gonna. So I'm just like I'll just fucking stay here. I'm I'm enjoying the amount of people leaving California. I hope more people do it. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm gonna stay. You know, they say I want to move. I want to move to a state where my vote counts. Well, you better bring a snow shovel. <laughs> you know. Yeah, well, I mean, I think it counts anywhere. <laughs> yeah, right. it's, it's always gonna be. It's gonna be right. It's gonna be fucking. Yeah, rigged. does it really count? It's a good point. Does it count anywhere you move? No. <laughs> I don't think it does because when 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 even like when when liberals oh my god we're so much better than you we even when they're just overtly fixing things like the last two like uh, elections I always say this shit they fucking Bernie Sanders won the popular vote and they were just like yeah no we don't want we're going him. with the company man you got Hillary whatever this fucking bozo's name and what the hell is what's his name Biden Joe Biden I'm out I I I, I, I sleepy Joe yes. Sleepy Joe. It's a nice way of saying he has fucking dementia and he's right next to the red phone. But that's not a concern. Right, right. That's not a concern for people. Uh, what have you been up to as far as like uh, uh, touring? You out on tour? Uh, no, I'm just hanging out at the mothership. I guess uh, I'm, it's the lazy way to tour. Oh, okay. You know, I can stay there and, uh, uh, you know, and uh, not because you know how airports are today. If you can. Is that what it is? Is that why you don't do the road? Because you are, to me... No, you got to put asses in the seats, and I'm not there yet. Okay. And until... Which I don't understand how. You're the funniest fucking guy out there. Well, uh, uh, it, 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 it's all on me, you know. It's, uh, you, it's you know, uh, maybe someday, you know, that's what the hope is, but I'm, I'm enjoying the ride, you know. Up until I, then, I, I, you know I what I mean? What, no, I get what you're saying. And I don't want to go to some nowhere land, no place, and you know, you've been to all of them. Oh, yeah. They drop you in the middle of nowhere, and you get there, and you go, why am I here? <laughs> oh, yeah, you kind of got, yeah, that's something that you know. Those I are, mentioned, like, like uh, there's certain people that are just great at the business, 
and okay at comedy. And then there's guys that are great at comedy and then they're not good at the business. So yeah, you're not, you're not. <laughs> so if you guys. <laughs> you know, it, it really is, you know. That's what really, what it is. If you want to. <laughs> you know, until somebody guy, holds my hand or I, you know. Because that's what's funny. Because like, that's the same. I think in all art forms and everything. It's like art, like this is this, you know, okay, this is the greatest guitar player, this is the greatest painter, or whatever. It's like, are they really, or did they just have the greatest hype? I mean, they're still good, but like the hype machine, there's always this fucking guy around the corner going, dude, there's this guy two towns over, man. He could play with that guy, plays blindfolded. Or uh, he's just, you know, we just, where is he? Stays to himself. He's at work. That's you. He's at work. Yeah. Do you ever try to get better at the business? Are you content? No, I'm doing now. I'm reaching out. I reached out to you to be, yes. to be on here. I reached out to Bobby Lee, and I reached, I reached out to uh, Theo Vaughn, and I, uh, Joe Rogan knows I'm interested in doing his podcast. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I am, you know, I'm the kind of guy that doesn't like to ask for anything. You know, I'm from back east. What does that mean? That means you just... Uh, you don't want to ask for anything. You just, you know. know. You do, you How's just, that working out? It doesn't work out very yeah, well, especially yeah. in show business. <laughs> here's, another thing back, here's another thing back east. They're going to be like, don't be getting all fucking happy. Don't be getting all happy. Like, dude, there is just so much trauma back east. You have to get away from it. Not saying forever, but you got to stand back and look at it. And then finally see it and then see how it affected you and try to like, because who the fuck was, you know, I'm not happy. And, you and know, I don't ask for help. I, me, I, me, I me, And then I take it out of my children <laughs> on the holidays. It's just like stupid. My parents took my brother Bruce and I to the uh, Westbury Music Fair back in the day. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Long Island? Right. And it was uh, Hal Linden. Remember Bonnie Miller? Yes. My mother was loved that guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it was, he was the headliner. He was a man. He had a nice full head of hair. He had a <laughs> nice a mustache. Yeah, they liked that. Oh, he loved Hal Linden. Look, Looked like he uh, had a cologne on. And, uh, and uh, he was the headliner. He played the clarinet. And then, uh, and then uh, before, he, 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 uh, the first comic was Bob Lemon, an older gentleman. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I realized you can be very senior and still do comedy. And it was great. His name was Bob Lemon. He's probably okay. gone now. And then guess who came up after Bob Lemon? Buddy Hackett. <laughs> Buddy and Hack. murdered and murdered, right? <laughs> he told the guy, the kid in the front row with his parents, "Did your parents ever find your mad jacket or you know, Buddy Hackett?" Right, right. And it was great. Then how Lin Linden Wait, came is this, up. Wait, is this the one that's in the round? Right, it was yeah. very in the round. I haven't done that in years. That was like amazing to perform there because I saw uh, Howie Mandel did a special there and absolutely right. killed. So it was amazing to be there. So I never knew where you were from. So you grew up because you don't I have an accent. I'm from Long Island. <laughs> You're from Long Island. Yeah. And what year did you come You're out? You're from Boston. <laughs> I'm from. I'm, no, but I'm from the, uh, the. I'm from the suburbs. Well, I was too. Like Long they Island. don't. You know, they don't make movies about the suburbs of Boston. <laughs> 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 they make movies about people from you know Southie, Charlestown, Dorchester. Like that's where the stories are. Um, but I I grew up in the. Uh, the suburbs were fantastic. Pond hockey, street hockey, playing hoop and, and pick. I, I grew up in a very, like, uh, a very nice town. I didn't have to deal with that shit that all, and, all those and, and you guys left your job. With. You left your day job to yeah. do comedy. I did. And, and it, it worked out wonderfully. It, it, it See, has. I never left my day jobs. Because well, you, you used to work on Mitzi airplanes, Shaw right? was spoiling me mm -hmm. every night of the week. I'm doing comedy at the world famous comedy store in Los Angeles. Every right. night, I could still do a day job. But, you know, as Jay Leno always says, the thing that will spoil a comedy career is a day job. <laughs> oh, a good day job? So, yeah. what, you working on airplanes, right? I was working for uh, United Airlines for 17 years. Then I was working at the Aerospace Corporation in El Segundo. <laughs> this is what the fuck he was doing during the day. And then he would go down to the comedy store. And, and, you, and you were better than ran. all of us. <laughs> and I was, you know, at the, I was, uh, they had, they had uh, Aerospace Corporation. It's a funded uh, government space, you know. 
and uh, I was a security guy at the gate. And at the end of the time I was there, you could have showed me a McDonald's uh, gift certificate. I would have let you in. <laughs> they had contractor badges. They had the military badges. They had like 20 or 30 different fuck, fucking, can you, is it? Right. Uh, no, I'm sorry, you can say fuck on this. Fucking badges. <laughs> then after that, I got a job in Manhattan Beach. Uh, in the police department because you know I had an act you know my act right, yeah. when you have an act like this <laughs> you lose a job you go out and get another job no right. one's going to tell me to keep your don't, don't quit your day job I know that I know that I'm getting another fucking job no one has to tell me that you know <laughs> but I was spoiled she spoiled me you know where else do you want to do comedy and it was that thing right. in your head that you want to be discovered in LA if you know she ruined my life. I came down here from San Francisco, from United. I said, I'll go to the comedy store, and I'll get this thing over with. And they'll tell you if you're funny or not. I'll tell you, you know. Oh, so what do you mean, get this thing over with? Like, what were you thinking, like? Well, I, you know, did, comedy. We grew up with some of the biggest comics in the, in the business. So, you know, it's, you know, mm -hmm. I, I guess I'm very humble. You know, I wasn't like, you know, I can do, you know, I, you know. Uh, so you thought it was this silly idea you had, and you were like, "All right, well, I wanted I'm to go just on. put it to bed. I didn't. I wanted to just do it and see if they told me get the fuck out of here at the comedy store. Then I could say I didn't try. Okay. I went to the mecca, and I and she and then see what happened. And now she loved you. Fucked for my whole life. Yeah. Why? Well, sometimes you you sometimes don't you sometimes. Uh, Envy just regular people? 100%. <laughs> That's what I see. 100%. <laughs> we always got to be thinking. We always. Gonna, uh, it's not like playing in a band where you can go up there like a. 100%. On crack and play the same fucking song for 30 fucking years and everybody's like, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. You know, we got a different audience every night. We got a different head. Our head is different every fucking night. Every, right. you know, it's, 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 it's the most. Uh, if, you, if you break it down, it's the most craziest, you know, to make somebody laugh. It's the, and it's also a gift. I mean, right. it's like making... But I think I would go nuts if I... Because um, I feel it's just how life is. Like, if your life is really busy and it's really loud. Like, I feel like what I do for a living is loud. I would say you so. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm loud. The crowd's loud. Whether they like it or not, it's just loud. And then right. so and then I crave after is quiet. I don't want to... I don't want to hear me. I don't want to hear anybody else. I just want to go sit somewhere and like when I'm... Driving in the middle of nowhere um, to some of these cities, you know, the, the, the places in between that I just sit there going like, if I just lived out here, right, it would be nice and quiet. I got an old pickup truck. I could just drive these roads. There'd never be any fucking traffic. And if I could just live like this little life. So what I've kind of started to do is I just do that in L.A. Like I try to keep my life like a little like five mile radius like if there's a restaurant outside of that, I'm just I'm sure it's great. I'm I'm not going. I'm gonna just there's enough. You want to stay on base, exactly. I want to stay on base. So like, I I know where I'm gonna get my Italian meal. I know where I'm gonna get my 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 tacos from. I know where I'm right. getting my coffee from. My gym's over here, and I just want to be like uh, like I definitely I definitely uh, understand that. But having said that, um. I've always wanted people to know who you are because I think, you know, it's one of those, you know, I don't think you got to be like, you know, work on your brand and all of this stupid shit that people say now. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a little and, bit too old for that. You know what I mean? I think what you're, the way you're doing it is beautiful. You know, I don't want to force it. I have this thing in my head. I've always had it. If, you've heard it a lot of times. A lot of people have said it. If it's meant to be, it's meant to be. Right. And doing stand up, there's no hiding. You're you're so exposed. Everybody's it's the only job where everybody knows how you're doing it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Per second. As it's going. And you know exactly when it's starting to like uh Yeah, it take and it takes forever to learn how to ignore that, control it or whatever. Is that your brand right there? This is uh this is my new uh no. <laughs> Now, knowing you, you bought something bought there like some. nine years ago, and you just kept the bag, and now you're walking around like a crazy person. I asked uh, Rose for a shopping bag. Okay. I bought you this book. 
you, I know you're uh, you're a director now, so I know you're interested in literature and books. My sister sent me this book, and holy I've, cow! I've directed a few things, but I don't know how. What a book this is! You'll you'll re- you'll read this in five minutes. They're making a movie on it. it Killers it, of the Flower Moon. This is uh this is a story of uh, these Indians. They gave them the lousiest land they could find in Oklahoma. And then they found out there was oil on the land. So then the, the white man came in and started killing. killing. I've heard of that story. Oh, you'll read this in five minutes. It's a page turner. Dude, I can't, I can't get rid of the books, man. Every time I finish a book, somebody gives me like two more. Yeah. I, I will definitely read this. But that's but this, a good this one. Do you know what I see how I read? This is how I read. I go like this. <laughs> I just look up, okay, 300, how many pages is this? No, you're a reader. You're a reader. I'm not, dude. Do <laughs> you know what I like to read is it eases me into a nap. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Wait. Okay. 324 pages. No, that's not it. You never know when the end of the book. 321 pages. I can do this. I wish the printing was bigger, but there are pictures. <laughs> Wow. All right, forget it. No, 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 no. I'm reading it. A masterful work of literary journalism crafted with the urgency of a mystery. Dude, the, the world is just full of so oh, it's many the craziest fucking planet. sick people. It's the craziest and planet. And I'll tell you what's it. Like the whole world. Do you know why I started re- finally re- read again? Why would you give me this? Because they always tell us we will never forget. So if you put this on your nightstand or on the refrigerator, you will never, ever forget. Bill, I don't, I don't want you to forget. That's, they don't want us to forget, right? You know, in a in hundred years or two hundred years, all these cities and towns are going to have these old steel girders right. all bent to shit, and people are going to go, "What is that for? What is that for? Why do they have that there?" You know, people. I was at work. I said uh, to my young coworkers, "I said, do you know who Paulie Shore is?" You know, how many of them said no? And he's still alive. <laughs> so what does that have to do with 9-11? I just thought that's a keep, that's a keep, what, uh, that's a keep This know. is a keepsake? Why would I want to look? I don't want to look at this. What do you got in there? That's Fucking a, Pearl Harbor? That's, that's a nice photograph. I don't want, you know, I don't want that. That's the Empire State Building. <laughs> that's a classic photograph. There you go. Black and white. Oh, you think about it. You, you may, I'm a, I, I think I'll just take the... the you know, I, the second genocide I look of around, Americans. Before I come, I look around my my house to see what things I can give to people. You know, what do they call it? Uh, uh, regifting. re-gifting. Regifting, yeah. <laughs> dumping the shit you don't want on me. The fact that that's in your house. Does your wife like go wine? Yes. Oh, then this is this is fine. Merry okay. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Look at well, us, everybody. We're your... celebrating Christmas in <laughs> July. I don't. I don't with drink. With so Brian Holes. I don't either. I mean, I do, but. Okay. She'll sure like All that. right. We'll ta- I'll take the wine in the book. I'll put the rest on a gift certificate. Never come empty-handed. No. But, uh, yeah, so, so, uh, so I am reaching out. I got this special. And we'll do another one at cer- cer- a certain point. We will. And, uh, and I'm, I'm, just, I'm as excited about the comedy as I did when I first uh, started in San Francisco. I remember That's the- amazing. So what year did you start? 1988. 1988. And the first thing I talked about was my grandmother. And I just talked about my grandmother, and they laughed, and everybody laughed, and it was just fun. It was just fun the whole way. What did you feel like when you got off stage, you got laughs, and you were walking out to the car afterwards? What, what was that feeling like? It was, just, it, was just a, it was just a fun, fun feeling to just get up there and talk to the people without a lot of preparation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and, just that, tell them, and, and the truth is always the funniest. Has that always been your style? Did you just naturally know to just go up there and start talking or just had that right, ability? Right, right. I, 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 I'm just real comfortable, and um, I, know, uh, I know what I want to say. And uh, Would I, you think about it while you were at work, working on planes and shit like that? Oh, or? yeah. Yeah, I would. Uh, were you one that jotted it down, or could you remember it? Once in a while, jotting it down. I'm not really a big, uh, you know, sit down for two hours a day and manufacture comedy that wouldn't uh, that wouldn't be holtzman i tried doing that it was just like okay so what's funny it's just like yeah it's, it's it doesn't not natural. work it's not, yeah. it isn't funny happens right you, do you want to tell the audience an abstract bit that you came up with or do you want to say something that the whole audience can identify with immediately 
That's a great question because I don't think there's a, there's a, a wrong answer there because right. I love the people that can come up with the abstracts like Stephen Wright stuff. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Oh, yeah. I saw him at the mothership. I bumped into him. He was still, I looked at him and just Stephen. <laughs> oh yeah, dude, that guy has a book out called Harold. You have to read. Oh yeah. Oh, it's like I don't even know how to. Uh, what was I describing it as? Uh, uh, Catcher in the Rye uh, on mushrooms. <laughs> like it is, it is wild. Like it's the two a novel. Yeah. Well, the two best books I read this year were, were uh, Jim Carrey's book and uh, and uh, um, Stephen Wright's. Two comedians. As far as like books that blew my mind, I'm sure this one. This is. I got a family oh, vacation man, you, coming up. This is a nice. This is good. Uh, sit on the umbrella at the beach. Uh, oh man! And just read of the crimes. Where are you gonna go? Uh, we always go back to uh, we go back east, you know, where everybody <laughs> tells it like it is. East, you know, in the west. Yeah, there's no, there's no, uh, nobody lies back east, man. <laughs> I'll tell you right off the bat. When a contractor says it's gonna be done in three months, he gets it done in fucking two months and twenty nine days. <laughs> Tell us the story when I saw you in the airport. We saw each other in the airport with the masks on. Oh, yeah. Did you recognize me or I recognized oh, yeah. you? I think we both recognized you. No, other. I came walking up and you came walking up and going, hey, what's going on? I was just looking at you like, who the fuck is this guy? We had masks on. Or I know I was looking at I I was talking to you and you were looking at like, who the fuck is this guy? And then I finally pulled down and go, oh, it's Bill Burr. And you're like, oh, shit. How are you? Yeah. Yeah. It's already looking like an odd time when we all wore masks because it just didn't fucking work. I can't believe it to this day. How I can't believe going. it didn't work because, you know, you got everybody's got to be pulling in the same direction. It was doomed. Wearing a mask, not wearing a mask. None of it was going to work. None of it was going to fucking work because everyone was doing what they Everyone was living their best life. So that was... That was it. You know, at the end of all of that shit, you know what I feel bad for? I felt bad for the doctors. <laughs> the doctors? Yeah, because I don't think anyone was really listening to them. Even people who said they were listening to them were still doing shit they shouldn't have been doing. And I just remember <laughs> picturing them working day and night. The fact that they came up with anything within a year is fucking amazing. And then they were just sitting there like, why are we trying to save these fucking assholes? <laughs> all they're doing is just like shitting on us. It's kind of like, you know, when you, when you have like, you know, like a third set at a comedy club. And it's just a fucking, the crowd doesn't oh, three, give a fuck. Three shows a night. Yeah, and they're just being assholes. And you're just sitting there going like, you know, I, I, I flew all the way out here. I, 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 I could have just stayed home. I didn't need to fucking do this. Like, I, I kind of, I felt for doctors and all of that, you know. Three shows a night. In your day job, would you ever go to your day job, come uh. home, and then go back to your day job uh, the same go day. Home and then come I back know the again. comics, they make more money when they do more than one show a night. But it's, it's kind of fucking nutty, you know? Dude, well, let's me, do this three times. The in second one show. Night. The second show was the one that always get, would get me. <laughs> the first one, I wouldn't give a fuck because it was so long. I would actually be loose and goofy, right? And then the third one's the last one. So you're like, okay, no matter how bad this sucks, I know it's over in, you know, 45 minutes to an hour. The second one. When you're going back up there, and here we go again, and knowing you still have to do it yet again, oh. And what about, sometimes don't you forget if you said it already? Well, fortunately, the, when I was doing three shows in a night, I would try to keep it roughly in the same order. But as I got more and more seasoned, and I was just talking and doing whatever, then it started, I had to do a lot. Did I talk about this already? Like, I don't know, they got me working. Fuck. If they don't they got me working from 6 to 2 a.m. tonight, <laughs> just up here, like empty in my fucking brain um my favorite comedy clubs though were and what i do love about joe's place is i love a comedy club that gives you the choice on whether or not you want to go out and see the crowd after your show i like right i heard i hear all the horror stories bill yeah go out there and meet the people no i don't even mean that i mean like you didn't have a good set or you got into it with some guy and you have to get off the stage and then walk through the crowd waiting to get suckered or get yelled Who at. Who tells you to do that? The club owner? The design of the club because the green room is in the back of the room is what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about meet and greets. I'm yeah. talking about how the genius of having like the, the original punchline in Atlanta. You walked off stage and you walked into a fucking green room. And if you just stayed in there, no matter what the fuck safe. happened out there, left. All right? But these other ones, like the very first one I ever did, Nick's Comedy Stop, it's like you got off stage and they had to walk the gauntlet of these drunk people. And, you know, if you, if you got into it in a bad way, then you're coming off stage, your eyes are adjusting to the light, it's all dark. 
Like it was, uh, you know, it just it was it was not comfortable. To yeah, say and the then least. then yeah. then next you just sat in the back and people just walked by you going to the bathroom. Well, hey, you fucking sucked. <laughs> or uh, say something fucking now, or just you know, or, or <laughs> they liked the show and they would still come up to you and they ask you just like a bunch of dumb questions. Which that it's just all sucking your energy for like the next show. Where it's like I love the punchline in Atlanta. You just you just went into that that fucking place and just sat there and just closed your eyes, you know, let everybody leave or whatever. And then you could recharge for the next one because it's not the second show's crowd's fault that you got tired because the design of the club was fucked up, you know? So you like doing one show now. That's all you do now is one show a night. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm too old for two shows. What three? Three. I could look. If I'm doing 45 minutes. I could do three standing on my head. But if I'm going to be doing like an hour and 15, hour and 20, then yeah, I don't want to do like three right. in, in in a row. It's like why don't we just get them all in one place at the same time? And I'll do. It's much more efficient. I think. I just did four weekends in a row, and I'm just like I I can't like. Uh, that's a lot of work. That's a young man's game. It is. It's a young man's game, and uh, and that's another thing too is I like being old getting old i'm en really enjoying it and i like how your role in society changes where like now you know do you know i did what i did and now i cheer on the younger people it's it's fun what are you doing there sonny boy <laughs> oh that's fantastic you stick with it you don't listen to the jerks i'm gonna sit here and read my paper see if anything funny you comes how to me sensitive your ears get as you get older oh my ears are shot i got i got tonight it's really bad in this one oh, i probably yeah. have it in this one too but this one rings so loud that I can't hear this one. But I remember hearing this story of a guy. He went to the doctor and was like, Doc, I'm going to fucking blow my brains out. You got to get this. Just kill the ear. And he killed the ear. And he goes, all right, how's that? He goes, now it's in this ear. Because he couldn't. This one was just ringing louder. It was drowning it out. Mm. I don't know if he then killed himself. <laughs> That's uplifting. So hashtag cancel Holtzman. Is yeah. the entire special out? Are we just putting clips out? Like, how? What are we doing with this thing? The whole the whole special is out on the Comedy Store YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. It's also on my uh, YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. So if somebody wants to watch it, they can just punch in cancelholtzman dot com and it'll H -O -L -T -Z -M -A -N. take H O L T Z M A N and it'll take you right to uh, my YouTube channel. And then I put some clips out. I have a guy that makes clips for me. Well, dude, I think you're... Uh, so what should I do? What should, where should I go from here? What would you do? Oh, my question would be, well, what do you want to do? Do you want to sell Put them? asses in the seats. That's, Put you know, asses in the seats? You know, that's the whole nine. They always want to know. We'll give you 50% of each seat. If you get that seat, we'll give you... Yeah. You know? And when they're coming um, to see you, that's half the battle. I they would, know what they're going to get. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to convince anybody you know no it's your job to lose them once you get a follow in the beginning oh. <laughs> no in the beginning it's you have to get them right and you're worried about okay, am i gonna get them and then once people come and they know who you are then the fear is am i gonna lose them are they gonna come back again was that good enough did that suck or whatever so i don't know if you have a i don't think that's i don't think you have that problem no i do no, 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 no. No, I do. You, if, you, if you listen, do, if you, would you, do, would you get, do a stadium back east? But can I tell you something? Back east where everybody's fucking, you know, <laughs> what they're thinking, they fucking say it. Not like these West Coast people. The lying is all, this is the deal. Lying is all in the West. Racism is all in the South and in Boston. <laughs> and then people who tell like it is, is they're fucking the back east. And then uh, everyone in the Midwest, oh, they're just nice. They're just fucking, it's all bullshit. It's all a yeah, bunch yeah, of nonsense, yeah. huh? Yeah, I've I've been to Fargo. They weren't going like, oh, you betcha. <laughs> they weren't saying. I understand that, you know, but I mean, it's just it's not. That is kind of funny, you know. I was actually talking about because um, I'll tell you that. Oh, as far as like racist, one of the most racist fucking places I've ever been to is New Jersey. Oh yeah, New Jersey is just fucking and Staten Island. Yeah, and it's just like, but for some reason, they haven't had enough of a major incident. That, that I, I don't know, they just kind of get away. I mean, it's fucking insane. Like, just the way that they respond to, like, different material. Um, 
Maybe Boston is at the same level, but I'm just New Boston's is no worse than fucking New Jersey. And people always go, "What is it? <laughs> what is it about Boston?" And I always just go, "Well, where are you from?" Oh yeah, people aren't racist there. Like, how do you do it? <laughs> are you sweeter with your fucking racism? racism like, how did hatred? you guys cure racism? <laughs> Yeah. You live in an all white town. Is that what it is? So everybody gets along with each other. Is that like, I've just, I've kind of, um, yeah, there's just, there, there's, there's, uh, and the there's, a lot, there's a lot of characters out there. And the media doesn't help. They're making money on making people upset. Dude, how about Hollywood? I'm going to tell you something. All the racist shit, the most racist shit I ever thought I got from Hollywood. That's the funniest fucking thing. Like their idea, like that they're, they're the beacons. You know what I mean? And it's like, you're not. You guys have actually been racist pop propagandists for the longest fucking time. Like, all my ideas about every race of people came mm -hmm. from a room full of white writers <laughs> writing this shit. And you didn't even notice how fucking racist it was. Now I go back because I watch all these old movies. I go, this is like fucking insane. Every role for someone not white, drug dealer, <laughs> rapist, all of this fucking crazy shit. And then they have the nerve to go back. Like, like Hollywood right now is just like, like becoming integrated in 2023. And they've been walking around acting like the, 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 the fucking chosen ones as far as white people. Right. Like sports integrated 60 fucking years ago. And I feel like Hollywood right now is where baseball was in like 1958 <laughs> where you had like fucking Roy Campanella, uh, Jackie Robinson and Willie May. They got three of them. There's three. <laughs> Three of them, so um, yeah. So I find like, what do you? What well, do you, it's just funny out here them saying how fucking racist Boston is, and I'm like, as opposed to what, what? the shit you guys have been putting out. What do you think about the strike? They're up against an organization that can figure out how to pay somebody one cent. I know <laughs> that's gonna be a tough. That's gonna well, be you know what? When I, I find what is is amazing about it is it's no different than any other. Uh, like that's what I hope people get in red states when they look at it, because they oh my god Hollywood's this bleeding heart blah blah blah. No, the only bleeding out here is from your throat. <laughs> like you see what these guys are fucking doing. Like they, they are they are gangsters, and this city is not La La Land. This is the toughest fucking city. I ever lived in New York as tough as New York was you, you, you just wasn't all consuming that you show business this shit is like living in Silicon Valley where I, I just you know I imagine the people that work in there is like oh my god if one more fucking person comes out to me talking about their fucking app I'm gonna blow my fucking right. brains out um, like out here I don't know and it's also like the, how the weather doesn't change it just becomes like Groundhog Day and if you're failing out here like how mentally strong you have to be it's just fucking it's fucking brutal so hence um, the day job yeah, well, I would, and I would say what they're doing out here is, is yeah, it's, it's uh, I would say uh, I can't get my mind around that level of greed, but I think it's in all aspects. It's, it's the corporate mentality. It's that disease of every quarter we have to make more money. How can we make more money is you have to take more. Because after a while, you can only charge so much for your product. And then what you have to do is you have to start taking from people that create the product. And then I don't, I don't know. It just keeps going, and then you just at some point. Where you, can we look for more savings? It just what we are, we're at right now. It's like bone on bone, and I don't think you know what writers and performers are asking for is like they're not asking for the pie in the sky. They're just asking like, can you guys just be satisfied with being fucking multi multi millionaires and billionaires or whatever? And uh, I'm lucky enough that. Um, I always stuck with my stand up and I always I always knew I was like I can't get cuz I used to see people you know get some inroads in Hollywood and then they would quit doing stand up and I would be like like dude you can't give up that level of control these guys will turn on you in a second and then all of a sudden you're not making how any many money. comics got their hit feelings hurt with failed sitcoms or what have you I know. and they leave town if their feelings hurt they don't understand what they were dealing with and then this is the thing, and then the hardest thing ever, now you gotta go back on the road and try to make it again in your 50s. I mean, I mean it's hard enough to do it when you're young. So um, I always knew, that's why I, I've always been like, 
I got my podcast and I got my road. And then I, I just look at Hollywood like whatever these fucking guys give me, you know, if it's cool, I'll do it. But I'm making enough money doing this that I don't I don't need. Right, you have F you uh, money kind of thing. I mean, I don't. I'm like anybody else. Like I'm doing all right, but like if I if I stand still, you know what I mean. What was that book they used to have us read? Where that guy went all the way out to the ocean with the big fish, and as he was coming in back in, all the fish were taking bites out of it. And by the time he got back, was it called the K? What was Aaron? You read right? Do you remember that book? Did they have you read that out in the Midwest there with Anheuser Busch and all of that shit? Um, I can't remember the name of the old man in the sea. Okay, old man in the sea. Oh, I'm reading his short stories now. That's turning Hem- Hemingway, right? That's right. Yeah, so the, the, he, he hooks this fish, and he's in this little fishing boat. He takes him all the way out to the sea, and he risks his life to get this fucking fish. And by the time he gets it all the way back in, the sharks and all of these fish, <laughs> and he has, like, fucking, like, nothing left. So uh, I kind of feel like the way they have the game set up and the fucking taxes out here, it's like, all right, I could stop working, but not for the rest of my life. So that's something I talk. Well, you got to lower your overhead. There's a nice mobile home park in. Uh, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go live in a shoebox. Maybe if you didn't have so many needs, like having a different room to be in instead of sitting on top with your whole fucking family. Yeah. You're in the kitchen. You're yeah. in the living room. And yeah. You're in the den, and it's only a couple of steps. I do know that. That the, well, the crazy thing is them trying to break unions. The amount of people that died. So unions could could exist, and that I feel that's what created the middle class. I'm probably wrong, but I feel like that because it actually protected the worker. And I just don't know, like it's such a great country when people can get a job manufacturing something and afford a wife and kids. And like for most people, they're smart enough um, that that's enough for them. Like I wish that that was enough for me. Like I didn't have to go out and go fucking you know. Get on a stage, make you like me, do you like me, you like me, you know, that dumb shit, you know? Um, like, <laughs> I, that's what, you know, we go through some, I see people in these beautiful small towns. I always look at them going, like, that would have been me if all this fucked up shit didn't happen to me and created that <laughs> void. And I always look at them like, uh, like, uh, with, with, I'm happy for them and I look at them with like envy. Like I'm just like you know that you know I know they got their little restaurant they go to and they they fucking go home they got this nice like you know a few of my siblings live like that and I'm like I'm like dude you got it all you got a house you know you, beautiful wife you got you got it all you got it all you don't want to fucking be you know you remove all your laptops and your liquids <laughs> out of your <laughs> going to some goddamn place. Um, and I think to, the level of travel we do is not healthy mentally. Like, it fucks with you. Like, you know, when you come off the road, you got to kind of be like, just want to be alone for a couple of days and try to, like, uh, slow the, the fucking vibration down, which is why I want to read this book. Uh, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's a fun book. It's great. It's, it's, you, you wait till you read it. <laughs> Oh. It's just uh, no. I like I, it's, it's, the, it's the it's 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 how people treat people <laughs> with unchecked power. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. That's why I never believed into the like you know white people are evil. It's like no, we're not. We have unchecked power, and no group should have that because right. when they do, when the sociopaths, you know, as as the flowers grow and the sociopath's head comes, <laughs> the first, yeah, and that's the dude that runs it, like. People, uh, it's not going to be good, you know, for anybody. Why is it getting this deep? You have a great special. So I got to put, the- <laughs> I got to put asses, I got to put asses in the seats. That's All right. It. Well, you got to get some Yanni road dates. I got to put asses in the seats. We got to go out. Well, this is the thing. You got to go out. <laughs> That's what Paulie Shaw tells me. You got to go out. You got to get in the Midwest. You got to go. Go, go. Yeah. You got to go out there and you got to fucking, you got to hack your own fucking trail. <laughs> To build a Through following. this shit. Yeah, that's what you got to do. Yeah. You can't, and you can't, you can go out and open for somebody, but after a while, you have to leave. No, no, no. And <laughs> you, 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 it's you, not going to be opening for anybody. Why not? Nobody's going to want to be opening for <laughs> I would do it. Well, you're, you're, a, you're a great comic. You can, you can do it. You know. No, and I also enjoy great comedy, and I was also enjoy people being like, who in the fuck... <laughs> 
Who is this guy? <laughs> we're supposed to push buttons, right? We don't want everybody to come in and leave the same way. We want to affect people because we why like you, to affect people. Why do, now, oh, let me ask this. Why do, you, why, do you, why do you think you do that? Why do you think... Because I don't I th- think I've ever seen you going on stage with this, I want you to like me. No, no, because I, like I said, I have this, uh, I think what's h- held me back so long, you know, to think, oh, I can do comedy and I can be the funniest person. That's, that's, a, that's a segment of ego. And right. we grew up with George Collin. And uh, I, I remember the first time I saw a comedy. It was on HBO, on location. Mm-hmm. Do you remember it? Freddie mm-hmm. Prince And uh, yeah. there was a little brick wall. And that was the first thing, but I never thought I was going to do it. But I've always uh, respected it, so I never, you know, uh, you know, it's it's all about your how you feel about to do something, you know, like you, 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 you quit your day job. You said this is what I'm going to do. But I was always, uh, you know, trying to get better, you know. Well, it's intimidating, you know. It's intimidating, right. you know. I quit uh, my day job because I was moving from Massachusetts to New York, but I had full intention of getting another day job. But what happened was I had saved up money because I was living at home with my parents. I paid off my credit cards. I paid down my student loans because I was just like, I was so afraid of moving to New York and like not having any money and what the fuck was I going to do? So I, you know, saved up a couple of grand and I moved down there and just fucking ate, you know, I remember I just, yeah, eat spaghetti every fucking night, you know, cheap shit. And then, right. and I was thinking I got to get a day job. I got to get a day job. And I looked a couple places and then it just sort of changed to i need to get more gigs i need to get more gigs and um that's how it developed yeah yeah, and uh i do remember thinking like that that was one of the highlights of my career when all of a sudden i didn't have a day job and that was funny because he's like i'm having the whole fucking day to myself and then all i gotta do is just go down to the cellar or whatever the comic strip and do fucking 15 minutes make 20 bucks or eight bucks whatever the fuck they paid right and i got my weekend gigs and i'll be good but then you didn't realize that now you'd become this small business so you'd wake up and then it's like i gotta go to the gym i gotta stay in shape i gotta i gotta try to get an agent i gotta try to get a manager and then when you get them then you have to work them try to tell them what you want to steer them to ask the shit and it just became you know and now you got to have you got to have a fucking website you got to have these you got to put these cards out and all 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 the whole different ways of promoting yourself over the fucking years that everyone was trying to do and then dane gets on myspace oh god you got to get on fucking myspace and then it just all of that shit um it just yeah it's never ending it's never ending so yeah, it's, it's, it's... I just thought I was going to be fucking laying around all day. I was going to be great. <laughs> no. And you don't. Then you see it's all hell. Yeah, and you sit around just thinking about, like, what if it all goes away? And, oh, fuck, I pissed off that club owner. I remember Jamie Masada, man. He fucking threw me out of the laugh factory. What happened, buddy? You go on stage and you fuck, fuck, fuck all over the place, man? <laughs> I thought he was just joking around. Thought he was joking around. Then the next week, I didn't get any spots. And I was like, L.A., man, if you lose a club, you're fucked. Then I made the mistake of apologizing to him. And then he knew he had me under his thumb. And then that was fucking my, that was finished. I had to go back to, I had to go back to New York. So what like, year I, was that? Uh, 98 or 99. I still remember that. You fuck, fuck, fuck all over the place, man. He told me this. He said, uh, you need a beginning and a middle and an end. The audience doesn't know what the beginning and the middle and the end is. As long as Jamie they're laughing. Has, has, Jamie has driven more comedians out of the business and on the path. He's a necessary evil. I love him. But like, yeah, you're when, right. You're right. When, yeah, when, he, yeah. He really want to do it. He yeah. either makes you go like, you know what? Is this what show business is? <laughs> I'm, I'm getting the here. fuck out of here. Or you're like, you know what? Fuck this guy. Right. I'm going a different way. So I was like, fuck this guy. I sat out in front of his club. Like, fucking 8.45 in the morning for a 6 p.m. setup, uh, sign up Tuesdays. to do three minutes, and I was the fourth guy in line. Dude, fucking sunburn. I went on stage looking like a fucking lobster, right? I went up there, killed. I don't know, because I had such a little amount of material. Like, I could never do three minutes now and kill. I would bomb. But back then, I only had, like, whatever, you know? So I did my best three minutes. I went up, and I killed. And I was like, oh, man, this is it, man. He's going to want to manage me or anything. And I went up there, and he just fucking... 
Mm. I've told this story before. He's just like, you're very funny. <laughs> he goes, you should talk more about your father. <laughs> I go, yeah, you know, I got more bits about my dad and stuff. I just, you know, I only gave me, th- you know, I talk about my mother. And he goes, he goes, your father. <laughs> then he goes, how does it make you feel when your father yells? And then he sat back and went like this. <laughs> You know, like he had the answer to all my comedy problems and he was going to present it in riddle form. And I was literally, <laughs> I've told this story. I told this on Dom's Irreras when Jamie was there. I was literally holding on to the back of the legs of the chair, like nodding, like I, like I thought he was fascinating. I was like, this guy is out of his fucking mind. And I, and I remember just sitting there nodding. I was like, but I was really thinking, I was like, I'm moving to New York. I'm moving to New York. I'm out of fucking I, I, New York. I, I'm not dealing with this guy. And then what was funny was I moved to New York and then I got an acting gig out here and then he was giving me spots and then the acting gig went away and then he was fucking, he, he, right. your acting gig goes away and then you fuck, fuck, fuck all over the place, man. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, go, he always goes, I never said that, man. I never said that. It's like you 100% said that. You said all of that shit. I remember it because it was a, there was those were big moments in my fucking career. So anyway, yeah. I'm talking too much here. Cancel, hashtag cancel, cancel Holtzman. Holtzman. Yeah. So, well, uh, I appreciate you coming on. Give I'm, me the I, book and, and, and the booze and everything. Are you sure? You sure you don't want this so you can remember? I, will, I was there that day. <laughs> My brother Bruce was there. I was day, living too. in New York and I was on the Upper East Side and you never would have known that that was happening. It was an absolutely beautiful day and I remember what was so fucked up was walking outside and seeing people like eating brunch. It seems so fucking disrespectful to me. You know, you go to a deli, you <laughs> get a bacon, get a bacon, east, <laughs> egg and the, cheese, and go back to your farm. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, oh my God. It's like, I, I don't think everybody was just literally. One of the best neighborhoods in the whole wide world. <laughs> in, 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 oh yeah. Anything yeah, they you want fucking, there. Anything you want. It's well, what's funny though is after a while, all of Manhattan became the Upper East Side. Like nobody right. could fucking yeah. afford it. Right. I remember this douche a long time ago. We'll to go to Brooklyn now. When I, I lived on the Upper East Side, but it was, I was way up. I was on like 97th Street. And I remember this guy goes, oh, yeah. He goes, what building? And I didn't realize that he was being a snooty asshole. Because if you lived in a doorman building, it had a name. Right. You know, right. like the vampire or the, <laughs> the extortionist. And it had amenities and all of that type of shit. These guys, he's like, what? Where do you live? I was like, uh, the 147 <laughs> East 97th Street complex where... It was like, yeah, that was like, uh, whatever. Yeah. So anyway, um, it's a thrill to have you on here, dude. And, Thank you. Uh, Thanks for having me. I and, hold uh, you up there with all the greatest comics I've ever seen, dude. You are literally that good. And I hope someday, <laughs> someday enough people some watch some hashtag over the, the rainbow. rainbow. Watch hashtag cancel Holtzman. He'll put asses in the fucking seat and you then you'll put, realize that you I, put, I get actually it. suck. <laughs> Yeah, dude. No one thinks they're funnier than you, dude. You're you're fucking amazing. So thank you so much. Hashtag cancel Brian. Uh, hashtag, hashtag cancel Holtzman. Check it out and go see this fucking guy at the Comedy Mothership. Joe Rogan's amazing Austin, new club in Austin, Texas. Get out of the humidity. <laughs> Get in the club. All right. Thank you. Fantastic, Wonderful. dude. Thank, thank you, you so much for the book. Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's the Monday Morning Podcast uh, for Monday, September 14th, 2015. What's going on? How are you? Um, I know what you guys are expecting. They're probably expecting me to uh, talk shit about the Patriots winning and the Steelers crying about the uh, the headsets or whatever the hell they were crying about this week. Why, get, why does everybody... You know what I love about Giants fans? They never bitch about the Patriots. They just beat us. All the rest of you fucking sit there crying every week. Anyways, uh, I'm not going to get into that. Um, I have a very special guest here, one of my favorite all-time comedians of all time. But first, I have to read his amazing uh, intro here. Um, Brian Regan, everybody, is going to be performing live at Radio City Music Hall in the first time ever in the history of Comedy Central. 
Brian, you might as well talk at this point. I've already said. Yes. Um, how many how many spe- uh, specials would you guess that Comedy Central has in their mountain? Their, their wow. Vault? I uh, probably quite a few, but uh, this, seven, eight million. Yeah, seven to eight million. I think is. Uh, <laughs> well, well, this one. I'm going to bet on the over. I'm going to say it's nine million. Nine million. I like that. Uh, nine million specials. This is the first guy who's ever had the nerve to uh, tape a stand-up special live on uh, Comedy Central, and he's going to be doing it, let me see if I can, on September 26th at 9 p.m., live from one of the most legendary venues of all time, Radio City Music Hall. Um, I mean, I'm looking at the whole press release. You got, like, you know, five stars from Jerry Seinfeld, Chris Rock, Dennis Miller, Joe Rogan, Patton Oswalt, the, the Mark Marin, the who's who, and... Uh, we all love you, man. You are, you are, you've been, what's it like to have been a comics comic for a quarter of a century? I, it's a huge, huge honor, man. You know, when, uh, you know, making audiences laugh is great, makes you feel good, but to also, you know, make the comedians feel like you're doing the right thing, that makes you feel even better. I know my fun in this podcast is going to be torturing you, you with comp- compliments. Because I can tell. I, that was the most uncomfortable I've ever seen you. Hey, what's it like to be a legend, Brian? No, Talk no. about being a legend. Like, I'd say... Uh, I'll, uh, I'll, go, I'll go right into a bombing story. Let me tell you what happened when I bombed. And that wasn't so legendary. No, man. Like, I've been doing this shit for 23 years. I'm old now. I am an old man now. I, I know that every time when I try to do stand-up out in Silver Lake. I'm not saying... The kids are bad. It's just I definitely feel like, wow, man, I feel like that, that generation gap. But you, you've been like since I started. Um, for those people like unfamiliar who've been living under a stand-up comedy rock, like, <laughs> like Brian basically goes out and for 90 straight minutes, it sounds like a jet is landing, how hard this guy kills. And he never – you and unlike <laughs> me, you couldn't be the more polar opposite of me. You don't you I don't even think you say heck. <laughs> no, sure I do. You say that, but oh, yeah, yeah. okay, but still. I I know I I do some hex and some dams. But dude, your act is like airtight. Like nobody <sighs> can no one can be like, oh, you know what? He's just uh he's just what? He's just writing perfect jokes. For, I'm sorry, Brian. I hate to torture you with this, but there's no other way to go with this. You're just I, I'm, you're an I'm, absolute master. You're very kind, very incredibly kind, and I cannot thank you enough. That's very <laughs> no eye contact. That's very no eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, and I remember. Very, I'm going to keep going here. Uh, I remember when I when I first started headlining uh, in the late '90s. Um, the legend back then was when you booked Brian Regan, you would do two shows in one night, and you would do two completely hour plus. Totally clean, absolutely destroying sets. Like you had like the A set and the B set, and you had like the, there was always this this urban myth. He's got two notebooks. <laughs> They're both filled up. Once once the first show and once the second show. He's doing. He literally. The guy's got two hours and forty minutes of A level material. I, I called it the idiot and the oddity. Oh, <laughs> those were the two the two shows. They were two different one hour shows, and I would go to a comedy club for like a month. And um, right. and I would alternate them. And the idea was if somebody came out and they liked what they saw, they'd go, wow, he's got another one. Maybe we'll come back and see the other show as well. So Now, did that come about because back then when you were coming up, like you had to be like anointed to do a special. And nowadays you just need somebody with the camera and you, you can put it up however you wanted. Mm-hmm. Like back in the day, HBO had to say, like, you know what, you're one of the six people that we're picking this year or – I didn't even think Comedy Central was really making too many specials uh, back then. So I was just wondering, did you, like, you wrote a special at that point? Did you just say, to hell with it, I'll just keep writing? Like, how did you end up with that much material at one time? Actually, well, be, just because I, you know, I'm, I'm always trying to write stuff. But it came about because, do you remember when people were starting to do the one-man shows Oh, yeah. Uh, like Rob Becker defending the caveman. You know, they would take uh, stand up and then kind of make it into a little story with a beginning, middle and an end. And take out a few laughs. You sit down behind a desk. Yeah. I mean, Rob lighting. Becker's is great. You know, uh, but there were a lot that were just, you know, seemed like kind of repackaged stand up, you know. And 
people were telling me, well, you should do a one man show. You should, should do a one man show. And I'm like, I, I, I like stand up. I like the way stand up works. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to like you know do a joke and then have a serious point and then walk across the stage and <laughs> so, so, have a tear come so, out of so, my so eye. Dramatic lighting. <laughs> yeah, right. You know what's so funny? I just totally relate to that because I've had so many people where like my dream was always, I just want if I could sell out improvs, that was the dream. If I could if I could just go like, I to me when I was starting out when somebody said oh I have a gig in Houston this week. Or I'm in Minneapolis this week. Like, to me, there was nothing cooler than that. Like, this guy gets to get on a plane yeah. and fly, and people know who he is, and he gets to go in there. And back then, it was you get to wear the sport coat, right? And you get to go oh, out and be, be a comedian. I just thought that that was the coolest thing ever. And I don't know how you feel about this, but when, whenever um, you could have, like, the greatest special ever, and then they're always just like, uh, see, any TV, any movie, like, for it's, it's always looked at... Um, it's got this weird thing where stand up is really respected by people, but then it's also looked at as just like this stepping stone right. into uh, you know doing like a uh, I don't know like a sitcom or being some sort of actor or something like that. And I always just I always thought like no, dude, this is the thing. This I, is the thing. It always will be the thing. I can't get fired from this. I'm always going to be employed, and it happens in real time. There's no cut. Let's go back and do it again, and you're sitting in a, a trailer for 14 hours. Yeah, it, it's, you know, the, there are, you know, a few people who like it as an end result. I don't say a few. There are a lot of people who love stand-up comedy. But, yes, for a lot of people, it's a, a stepping stone to get into acting, to get into a TV show or movies, and that's great. Um, but I like it as it is, you know, and, um, you know, people do always ask about the thing you don't have, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just remember for years, you know, people coming up to me, uh, you know, have you ever done the Tonight Show or whatever? And, I, and when I hadn't, and yeah, like no, no, I haven't done that. And you know, you should call Jay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, the the very the first year I was working at the comic strip in Fort Lauderdale, I, I, I was a. I work in the kitchen. You know, I would like cook burgers. They would let me go on stage at the end of the night, and a guy came up to me after a show and said. Um, Rodney Dangerfield is playing down the road at the Sunrise Musical Theater. He goes, why don't you go down there and open for him instead of this? <laughs> you know, like, like, like all it took is me to just know where the theater was. Like, I just walked down there. Oh, is he in town? I oh, I, where, where is it? That way? <laughs> so I just go down there and I open you, for him in a just, theater? You just show with your apron, your I'm greasy the, apron. You're such a moron. I'm paper working hat. in a kitchen here in a comedy club. I could go right down the road and open for Rodney Dangerfield. Do you Thanks know for the suggestion. But you know what's funny in a way? That mentality is how I got into this business. <laughs> was because I wanted to be a comedian. I didn't dare say it out loud, but I, I, ne I didn't think it was possible. Because like when I was thinking about doing it, was which is like the late 80s, started in the early 90s. But the late 80s, I first started thinking about it. But there wasn't any YouTube. There was none of that crap. So to me, I was living in Massachusetts. Show mm -hmm. business was 3,000 miles right. away. Like It just seemed impossible. And then I was working in a warehouse with this guy, and he was just going like, dude, one of these nights, and he likes staying up like where I did. He goes, one of these nights, I'm going to take a shot at Jack Daniels, and I'm just going to go down to an open mic down the street and, you know, and just go up on stage. And all of a sudden, I was just like, oh, Wow. You can just do that? <laughs> I thought I had to, like, you know, get my teeth capped and moved out to L.A. and get a fake tan. Like, I had no idea how to. So I always I always have, like, a panic attack when I think about that. I go, thank God I worked with that guy. And thank God that he said that. And he took it out of seeming like, you know, it was like the Milky Way away. He, he, he like, made it like, yeah, yeah, just go right down the street. You just did. They, did that guy ever do it? You know, I don't know, because we worked together for such a short oh, period okay. of time. I have no idea. That's the only reason why I don't like telling that story, because then people are like, did that guy end up doing it? <laughs> oh, whatever happened to him? He's probably like some zillionaire banker. You know, I'm sure, you know, sitting by a pool, loving his wife and kids and his dog, just totally happy. But it's just to me, he didn't do what you did in life, so he must not be happy. When I, when I first decided I wanted to be a stand-up, the only comedy clubs were in Los Angeles and New York. I was in college in Tiffin, Ohio, and I knew I wanted to do stand-up. This was what, before. What year? What year was this? Uh, 1980. This is going way back, man. Right. And um, so I knew I wanted to do it, but comedy had not yet, you know, exploded. It right. was only in those two cities. So I 
was gearing up to having to move to New York City. I'm like, I didn't know what was going on. So what I thought I had to do in 92, you actually had to do in 80. That's what, yes. And then I went back down to South Florida, which is where I grew up, and I opened up the Miami Herald, and there's an ad in the Miami Herald for grand opening for the Comic Strip Comedy Club in Fort Lauderdale. It says, Sister Club of the famous comedy club in New York City, open mic night, Monday night. And I'm like, damn. Like, like it could not have been more beautifully perfect. Like, <laughs> That's I don't have to move. Right. I don't have to move to New York City. I can just fill up the car with gas and go up to Fort Lauderdale and try it. And so it became so much more attainable when I saw that ad, you know, and that's right. where I started. That's amazing. I had a very similar thing. I, had a, I made a New Year's resolution in 1992 that at some point in the calendar year of 1992, I was going to do an open mic. That's how, like, shut down mm-hmm. and shy I was. I was so nervous about it. And the second I said that within two weeks uh, in the school paper, the Emersonian, I went to Emerson College, it said, uh, Nick's Comedy Stop. I had a contest. It was an ad, find Boston's funniest college student. Wow. And the whole thing was just to, just to pack the club with a bunch of drunk kids right, buying right. drinks, watching their friends bomb. So I immediately I, I, I bought the paper. Uh, might even been free, I think. I can't even remember. It was a school paper. I think it was free. And then I brought it home, and I just immediately called the phone number before I chickened out. And I was just like, I want to do an open mic. And I remember so many kids from Emerson signed up that they actually gave us two nights. So I was supposed to go on at the end of something, the last Monday in February. And then they called up. They said they had overflow. Would you want to do the first Monday in March? And I was like, okay, like just to put it off. And then I hung up, and I felt like I pussied out. And um, But very like a similar thing. So... Yeah, I mean, it's weird how things will leap out at you. I mean, that, you know, all the ad, of all the ads in the world, you know, for fast food places and hotels and that ad for that comedy club, like, jumped off the page to me. It was like, holy shit, man. Um, it was just, it was just perfect. And then I went there. So it's 1980, so you went down there. So tell me about your first, when you went on stage. Uh... Well, actually, they, want, they wanted you to get there early to draw numbers. So I had to make the hour drive. I was still living with my parents in Miami. I make the hour drive up there, and I get there, I don't know, six and five Did they know six. you were going to try it? Your parents? I don't know if I, I may have told my parents, but I, I didn't tell anybody. Me too. I didn't tell I anybody. I don't tell nobody nothing. You know what I mean? <laughs> that was like a mob hit. Yeah. It's like, I, I want to go up there and if I bomb, nobody's going to know yep. about this till the day I die. So, Brian, you seem so quiet. What's yeah, the well, no, nothing. I just uh, nothing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing this? Year? I'm just getting a little dressed up and leaving the house. So I go up there. And there were like 20 comedians that had to draw numbers. You had to draw numbers for your time slot. I, I didn't know what any of this meant. And um, I drew, I guess, a good number. You know, I had like a sweet spot right in the middle. And then right after the um, the drawing, all these other open micers who had done it before, mm-hmm. I, I guess it had been open like a month, you know, came up and said, I'll trade you, I'll trade you. I'll trade you my number for your number. And all I knew is whatever I was holding was valuable and I wasn't trading it for nothing. You oh, know? nice. You know, I'm like, they want this, so I'm, I'm keeping it. So I went on, um, and what they, they had three co-headliners. It was very weird. And then they stuck the open micers up in the middle. I went on right in the middle of the show, and uh, I just completely blanked out on stage, just complete wipeout, blank, could not remember anything. And when just, did you realize that, walking towards the stage or when you got up and turned and faced them? What happened was I had every word memorized. I had, hi, how are you, written down. Which and hand you were going to wave with? Everything. <laughs> I, I, I had, hi, how are you, written down and memorized. I walk on stage, and that's the first time I realize how bright these lights are. Like I'm like wigging out that I can't see a soul. And then I... I started to say, hi, how are you, in the microphone, and there was feedback. I was too close. I went, hi, how are you, you know? Oh, no. So I did my first ad lib, 
I said, uh, well, I've already learned one thing. I don't know how to work a microphone. And it got a laugh. Oh, nice. And then my brain just shut off. Oh, because you didn't, you know what? Because I had memorized, hi, how are you, to the next thing. And when I ad-libbed, <laughs> yeah. I didn't know where I was supposed to go after that. And so they laughed at my ad-lib, you know, well, I don't know how to work a microphone. They laughed. And I'm standing there going, I don't know. I could, I blanked out, blank, blankety so blank. How, how long before you? I stood there for about um, 10 seconds. Which seemed like nine years. It was like an eternity. And uh, I said, well, you're not going to believe this, folks, but I forgot my act. And they laughed. And I said, no, 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 I'm, I'm serious. And they laughed. <laughs> it was like a Twilight Zone thing. Like, yeah, but you learn and honesty works. And I, and I started ad-libbing about how stupid I was for not being able to remember my act. I went, uh, this is great. I spent all this time and effort trying to figure out something, and I can't remember nothing. You know, just off the top of my head. And I started killing. And I, and I, I started killing rolling about how stupid I was. Um, Were you able to enjoy killing? Or are you so panicky? I enjoyed it. I, I, I knew enough to go, well, all I want is laughs. You know what I mean? Um, and I'm just winging it, you know, t talking about what an idiot I am and how this drive I made and all this stuff memorized. And I can't remember a single thing. Ba 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 ba. And I crushed, it, it, you know, at least in my mind. Yeah, for an open and, mic, dude, that's crushing. And, and then I said, well, I can't see myself ever remembering any of it. So good night. And then I got this big hand. <laughs> I, I walked it's off, fucking great. I walked off stage, and then like the the headliners, one of them came up to me and said that that was a great routine about how you pretended to blank out. I said I, I didn't pretend. They said that you really were winging that, and I was like, yeah. Uh, but I was like in a fog. You and know? what did he say? You should definitely come back. Was he a supportive guy? Yeah, I forget who it was, but he was supportive. He said it was really funny, and um, you know. So what was great for me is that my next time I went, I remembered my act and just ate it. That's but, hilarious. But I had the memory of knowing how to make people laugh from the first time that just kept fueling me to just keep going back and trying. What do you think would have happened if you just did your act and that first thing didn't happen and you completely ate it? Did you have it? you think you had it in you to keep coming back? I don't know. You know, I've talked to other comedians about this, and, and I. Uh, what's weird to me is that most comedians I talk to say that their ver very first time on stage they did well, you know, and then didn't do well the second time or third time. And I wonder how many potentially good comedians out there it, it didn't bomb. go well yeah. and just said hell with it. Now they're working at a Home Depot just, yeah. just crushing it every day. <laughs> right. And the they just never guy I've ever met in my life. And they just, you know, I, and I I truly wonder how many people just had the bad experience and go I I need this like I need a hole in the head, you know? So I, I know, know because the first time first I my my first two were uh I did Nick's the, the the talent thing it went okay and then I did Stitches comedy club uh and went did okay. And those are both comedy clubs. But the first time I did a room that wasn't a comedy club, I've told this story a zillion times on the podcast, but it was uh, Jack Lynch had this room, uh, Kelly's something or other, and it was some bar, and I went up and I, and I absolutely just ate it wire to wire. Mm. I said on the microphone, Jack, I'm bailing. I said that to the host, and all the comedians went, ah, oh, like they collectively <laughs> were like disappointed in me that uh, I quit and I yeah, hated yeah, myself. Yeah. And I remember... Uh, but I would say it never dawned on me to quit. Maybe it was because I, I did well those first two times, but I, I just never – I was just like, all right, well, what can I do to avoid that Right. That awful feeling again? But you know what's funny? When I finally started getting a little bit funny, I actually was doing one of your mannerisms, and people kept giving me shit going, you're stealing from Brian. It's like I'm two, three years in. Oh, I'm boy. going like, no, I'm not. You're a little – your crouch thing that you do. <laughs> I was so influenced by you because I, I, I had seen you. Like, first of all, everybody was freaking out when you were coming to play Nick's Comedy Stop. And everyone was going, dude, Brian Regan's coming. You ever heard of Brian Regan? And, um, and I was like, yeah, I'd seen him a couple times. I'd seen you a couple times on TV. It's like, you got to see this guy. And it's like, every comic in Boston was going, you got to see this guy. And I was like, I'm doing a Dick Doherty's room. It's like, I don't give a fuck. Finish your set and drive in here. And I came in and I caught your second set. I still remember you wearing this red button-down shirt. You went on stage, and you, you were killing so hard. Like, uh, 
you know, people wiping tears away, like falling into the aisles and stuff. And it was just so like you were probably the first big comic, like traveling comic. You came in, you followed all the Boston heavy hitters because you know how they used to love sticking like, yeah, yeah. you know, some legendary headliner with all the <laughs> local references in the feature act to try and bury you. And then you went up totally clean. And it was a combination of watching you murdering and then seeing all the comics that I respected, like turn in into like audience members. And, and they were doing that laugh, like, like love and stand up and then being like, fuck, why didn't I think of that? And that's when yeah, you were that's... doing like the prescription lens uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Windshield, windshield thing and all that. It was just, it was an amazing thing. And I, and I, I appreciate it. And man. I was Thank so you. influenced by that, that I started doing, I acted out. I was doing, I was doing like a little bit of when I would go into a punchline, I would like drop down a little bit. <laughs> and um, it took me, I did that for about maybe eight months to a year. I was doing that. And it took me about seven years to get that stink off of me. People go, nah, he's stealing from Regan. He's stealing from Regan. And I was just like, I, I was like, I was two years in. I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> we we're gonna, we got to learn from something. We got to watch it. Yes. But that's just a huge honor. And thank you very so much. So I was actually, I was doing you a little bit. And, uh, and then I, I they, fortunately I had guys like, uh, you know, Voss and Norton and Patrice and all of them. They teased me out of it. We used to all, <laughs> we used to all sit there and trash each other going, you know who you're doing and who you're doing. And, uh, <laughs> I used to tell Patrice he was doing a little bit of Fred Sanford when he was going like, yeah, it's I kind of kind of do like that thing with his face. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyways. Uh, well, thank you, man. I, I don't want to let – I very much appreciate the good words. Yeah. Well, look, I, I, won't, I won't torture you any more compliments. But So how did you come up with the idea to, to do a special live? I mean, that's uh, – Well, you know, um, you were saying about Comedy Central does a lot of – specials with comedians and i've done a couple of with a couple with them in the past and uh you know i just i just wanted to do something different you know you know what i love about it is the thing i hate the most about doing a special is afterwards when you have to watch the footage (laughs) and edit and look at yourself and listen to yourself i've always for the most part throughout all the specials i've done the few that i've done is i just whatever show felt better i just go just take that show Mm. and whittle that down to whatever time they need because i don't want to sit there and look at both shows then it's twice i don't i don't want to fucking deal with any i hate it i absolutely hate it and i avoided it the way i do like a term paper so back in the day so i was thinking about how you're you're not going to have to do that you're just going to go out you're going to do it, it yeah and it's done and then another thing too is like the only time comics do a, a, a special where they only have one show is if they don't have any budget. You clearly, you know, at this point, you can afford to tape two, four, six shows if you wanted to. You're only going to gonna do it all in one. Um, what is the game plan you got going into that as far as, like, is there is there any, like, mindset that you're going into before that? Like, all right, Brian, just go out there, have a good time, and uh, if something shits the bed. You know, dress it and keep plowing for. I mean, what are you going to do? It, 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 it's weird. Like, I don't want to overthink it. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, on the one hand, I just, you know, I want it to be a, a show just like any other show. It, there just happens to be some cameras in there and some people out there and TV right. world watching it, you know. Um, but at the same time, I, I want to have a couple of things going on. Like, I've been talking to my manager. It's like, all it takes is one idiot, one idiot in the audience that, you know, wants to... Uh, you know, have this be his moment. You know, it's right. like you can't watch golf. <laughs> you can't watch golf without a guy hitting a tee shot. Go in the hole! Yeah. And you just go, jeez, what, yeah. did, are you really that starved for attention? You, you got to yell that. Hate. What, are you going to go home and listen to yourself? That was me. I yelled, go in the hole. <laughs> get in the hole. Get in the hole. What do they say? Yeah. And they all say it, too. It's like you can't even come up with something original. It's just, you know, so, so I have this little fear, not a big one, because my, my, my audiences are pretty damn cool you know but all it takes is one idiot in the audience who's like oh wow it's gonna be live i can do something that you know right. i you know i can get some attention for myself so but then you know something then if you trash them then it just it, it what it would act, what that would actually do is it makes it like really unique as far as like if somebody were to do that and then you were to trash them um even if they were to kick him out, like, live on the thing. I don't want to talk about this too much, but you have a great crowd anyways to give anybody any ideas. But um, actually, the way you're looking at that, you know, when I, I was trying to think, you know, it's not like whenever I go do a show, 
I, I just do the show wire to wire and I don't screw up any jokes. You know what I mean? It's just when you're recording, it gets in your head like, oh, my God. Right, right. The documentation of that joke. I flubbed this word. And it's just like you don't care when the cameras aren't there. So I would think that you would just get into, ah, fuck it. You know, this is just I'm documenting my performance of this hour on this night. And this is how it came out. And then you just go out there. Is that what you're going to do? Yeah. Well, it's been a while since I've recorded an hour. The last thing I did was about five years ago. And that was um, a CD. Mm-hmm. I get I get antsy, man. When I get material, I want to. Yeah, I, I guess you know a lot of people get material and they go, "Wow, this is good material." I want I want to keep doing it. I get to where it's like I don't want to do it anymore. Yes, you know what I mean. It's like, wow, this is really good. I'm sick of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I want to. Rec- I like to record it so it's there. You know, I mean, it, it exists. But now I can move on. You know, exactly. so that's one thing I'm really looking forward to is. This is material that I've been, you know, kicking around for the last four or five years. And uh, I look forward to just nailing it down and then being done with it. The, the week after that, it's probably going to be more fun for me, like just starting to play around and, and, and get yeah. back into uh, some different stuff. But I, I'm really looking forward to it. But as far as the... Do you have sick- jokes in your act right now that you hate and you're actually thinking, like, oh my God, not that you hate, but you're just so sick of telling that you're like, I can't wait to record this yes, so yeah. I can just the, be done with I this joke? I start bumping up to that, and, and, I'm, and I try to resist it and fight it, and then like as soon as I start feeling that way, I try not to do that bit for a month or two, you know, yeah. so that when I redo it, it feels fresh. And this is a challenge because I'm coming up on this special, and I need to have it in my bones yeah. to a degree, but not so into my bones where it's like you're a machine up there you know i mean you don't want to suck the funny out of it you know so it's a a tightrope i always know which ones subconsciously i I don't even realize how much i hate certain jokes by the end of them um is when i go once i do the special it's just naturally the ones you it's like you don't even make the choice the ones that you hate you just never do them again right and i always think like wow man i must have really hated that joke i must have really been sick of doing that thing but uh you, you know it's funny from to me is that it's just like in your normal progression you know you come up with a bit you know some new thing and you're excited about it and you, you know you have your hit list right of uh uh, here's something new I want to get to. Here's something relatively new I want to get to. And, and I'll look over that before I go on stage. But I don't have a list of the bits that I'm dropping. Oh, they no. just fall away. Oh, they good They gone. just fall. You know, it, 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 there's something, like you say, about your subconscious that just goes, I've had enough of this one. Yeah. And it's just gone. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, and then a year later, you think and go, oh, wow, I used to do this bit about such and such. And I just, it just fell away. Yeah, you I know? never did it again after my special. Yeah. We got to take a real quick break here so I can do a little bit of advertising here. And uh, I almost did the radio thing. I always think to do that. We're here with Brian Rigger. <laughs> like, like people don't listen to these things wire to wire. So uh, I'm going to do a little bit of, you're going to listen to me read out loud here, everybody. And I will be back in a second. All right. And we're back. Um, so I, I was gonna, wanted to tell that story, uh, you know, um, one of the coolest things, it was the first time, like, I really got to hang out with you and, and uh, meet you. I was playing, um, I was playing the Comedy Works in Denver. Right. One of the great all-time rooms. And uh, you were playing, like, the, the United Center or the Pepsi Center or something in Denver. This, you were playing, like, with the Avalanche play or some shit. Red Rocks. I think Red it was Rocks. Red Rocks. Yeah, where you two shot that video. That, right. Like, yeah, like a... Unbelievable, eight thousand seater, and after you did your show, you still took the time to come in and catch my late show. And at that point, I don't think I had really, I'd met you a couple of times, but I never really got to hang out with you. And right before I went on, someone goes, "Hey, just so you know, you know, Brian Regan's hanging in the back. He came in and wanted to check out your set, and it was the most ridiculous honor. I couldn't oh, believe man. it. Then I was thinking, like, don't fucking go down into that crouch like you did back in 19, <laughs> 1995. He's like, this, dude, this guy's fucking stealing from me. He's doing me with, with filthy words. Yep, they're going, you too. You yeah. too. Hey, wait a second. No, I'd be like, you cunt. You cunt. <laughs> My filthy ass. Um, and then we ended up hanging out and you were so complimentary and nice and, uh, and also something that I loved. Was you were like me, you were over 40 but hadn't quit drinking. <laughs> I can't stand people that just can't, you can't fucking handle alcohol. I mean, right, I should talk right now. I'm going like, a, I shut it down every once in a while for like 70, 75 days. And uh, uh, by the time this podcast comes out, I'll be on like day 71. So, uh, well, you know, it was funny in the middle, in your set that night, you said that you weren't drinking. You said, uh, you know, I don't, 
I, I'm not drinking now or something like that. So I was thinking, oh, man, we're not going to be able to have a couple cocktails after the show. And then we went out to the bar afterwards, and I said, you know, I, I, I know you don't drink. And, he go, and you were like, whoa, whoa, hold on. Yeah. Hold on, butchie boy. Yeah. No, I was just like, Regan's here. I'm, if he's having a drink, i got to have a drink of Regan. There's no fucking way I'm not doing this. But I just take times off because I find, uh, like, one of the things that I cherish about being a stand-up comedian is the free time that I have. Um, to pursue whatever the fuck I want to do, either just sitting on the couch. Like right now, you know, it's a Saturday when we're taping this, and I'm taping three college football games, mm-hmm. which I probably won't watch until like Monday or Tuesday. And I just love that I can just have a Tuesday that if I want to get up at 9 and have an English muffin and then just watch three college football games in a row like I'm some assistant coach watching game film, like I got to break them down for somebody. I just love that I, that I can do that. But the the... The dark side of all of that free time is I can go out and get hammered whenever I want to. And if I don't watch it, I will start drinking again like I did when I graduated high school. With I just remember like 10 days after I graduated high school, my mother just walked in. Classic her. Just really stoic and right to the point was, um, your father and I think you've done enough celebrating. <laughs> was all she said and that was her way of saying dude you're a fucking lush and you're gonna end up in the gutter so celebrating um, yeah well i mean i was going out to like like two three four o'clock in the morning it was so funny because I, I was young i would go out i would be absolutely fucking hammered and by eight thirty in the morning i was at my warehouse job unloading trucks mm. and all i had to do was make it to 10 when the roach coach came and eat like a, one of those sausages. Right, right. And then it just sort of leveled me out and I was fine. And somehow I still had a flat stomach. It was fucking... I, I didn't realize how lucky I was back then. So that's that's why I I just go through periods of, uh, just, I, uh, sort of just sort of shutting it down. I, I, to me, it's like I, it's a once every two month thing. You know, like I, I, I know the night that I'm going to be able to get crazy and i'm careful and i'm not driving and i don't i know i don't have anything to do the next day i mean like it's planned you know when you're younger you know you just wing it you know hey let's go out but now it's like it's in my calendar i'm getting wrecked (laughs) on the 28th (laughs) with my friends you know i was hoping you could say once every two months you shut it down because you've been going too hard like once every two months i drink i'm like oh god i'm a mess (laughs) i'm a mess but i i got a I don't know, man. Like, I, I go on the road with my buddies. You know any of those guys? Uh, Jason Lawhead, Joe Bartnick, uh, just these great guys that I go to the Rose Bowl with every year, Paul yeah. Bersey. Um, they're part of that uh, that wave that came probably a couple waves after my graduation class. And they, they're all just guys, guys, cigar smokers, like to go to f- sporting events and all of that. So it becomes like... Uh, sort of a stand-up tour and a little bit of like a bachelor party kind of vibe you know minus of course the hookers and the blow and all that type of <laughs> shit we don't we don't we, or it's pretty mainstream it's all above the board legal stuff but um and what, ha- what the funny thing is is we get to the point like none of us you know we'll be like dude we're not drinking tonight we're not blah blah, blah. and just there's something about the chemistry of all of us really and the and the at the free time that we have that it, we just end up getting absolutely annihilated. Like some of the worst <laughs> nights of drinking we have is like, dude, we'll go easy tonight, right? <laughs> we just shut it down. You know, we've been hitting it hard the last three nights. So tonight we do the show, we get in bed, we hit the ho- we hit the fucking hotel gym, and then we're on the road. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, Lawhead's hosting, he'll come off and be like, maybe I'll just have one heater. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah and then, yeah, then yeah. all of a sudden, and then, and then, and then it just, and, I, then, I, and then we're laughing as we're doing it. <laughs> we're laughing. Just laughing at ourselves, so it's like a game of chicken because I I, I have uh, three different golf weekends a year with brothers and friends, and it's just guy golf weekends. And um, I don't even golf, and that sounds awesome. Oh man, we, we golf during the day. We play Texas Hold'em at night, and um, and you know I've got this bus, you know that can we use for the golf weekends and it's kind of cool and sometimes we have a long kind of cool that's fucking awesome <laughs> it's it's cool yeah, we play golf we get hammered texas hold them we got a tour bus it's kind of cool i got a poker table that was made to fit in the uh in the bus so we can play texas hold them while we're rolling so anyway you know you get in early you, you get on the bus early sometimes 7 a.m you got a long haul to get to the 
and there's like 12 guys and it's like who's going to be the first one to crack, crack. a beer yeah. you know and because everybody's like having coffee and trying to look like they're sane and normal <laughs> you know they have a thing of orange juice you and, and we're, we're all pretending like we're normal yeah you know what i mean and then one guy goes uh hand me a budweiser and then ne- next thing you know 12 budweisers are open and everybody just goes yeah the first guy goes let me get a budweiser and everybody's just oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. somebody's starting a little early <laughs> yeah right and then five minutes later they're in you know oh, the second you just hear it open <laughs> you're just like ah oh, dude I, I gotta get one of those <laughs> the last one i last run i did i did with bartnick in uh we actually had we actually went to the hotel gym like every day. This is when I knew I was drinking too much and I had to kind of shut it down. I was getting all fucking bloaty and shit. And uh, we had this thing that we did every day. That we after we worked out, we came out of the hotel. We went onto the bus and we had one Bud Light. And we knew we were just gonna have one Bud Light because we had a show. And you know we're older guys. You know if you have two drinks, you're gonna have to nap for nine hours. Right. Or you'd have to keep going and you can go for like twelve hours. Or you drink two and you're done. So we would have one, and because I knew I was just having the one, I would, like, savor it. Like, I would just be, like, sipping it. Like, I was, you know, like when you stole your dad's first beer. And it was, like, one of the highlights of the tour. It was was a fucking Bud Light. (laughs) I think I I could figure out how to make that in a bathtub, like in Prohibition. It was so fucking cold and delicious just sitting there. And they had, you know, the little TV there on the bus, and it just sat there. And we would always put on, like, Sports Center or something, and it was... uh, and then the hardest thing was when you finished was not in that next 10 minutes to grab the next one. I found out like, if I just could get through that 10 minutes and I grabbed the water and I started drinking that, like whatever that chemical need of like, yeah, man, let's have some more of that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I would kind of wear off and I was able to do my show. But uh, it's something that uh, I don't I had know. my uh, my brothers and uh, some other friends out in Las Vegas where I live and uh, they were on their they were on a golf weekend I lived there and I was able to join them one night and it was one of those nights where I said you know I'm I got a car for us you know and uh, please call me on one of these nights yeah I'll that, fly love in to for that shit oh man that would be fantastic that's when you know an alky call so, me in for the drinking <laughs> <laughs> when you're flying in oh yeah to drink yeah. So um, I don't play Texas Hold'em. I don't golf. I'll just be that guy. I'll be the guy so you're not guilty. I'll just open that first beer. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you'll be our designated first beer opener. Yeah. So we go out, and it was my, you know, it's like, all right, I knew I could let loose, you know. I didn't have my kids. I didn't have to drive, blah, 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 blah. So it was one of those deals where you wake up the next day, and you're like, I don't quite remember the end of the evening. I swear, I look on the... I shouldn't be telling the story because of, but I, I, I nothing see, you're going to say is going to be anything worse than I thought. The my shirt, I had a button down shirt that I had worn the previous night. It's laying on the floor next to me on the bed on the on the floor next to the bed. I pick it up and there's a tire mark across the back <laughs> of it, a car tire mark, and I don't I don't know how it got there. I'm like what. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a car couldn't have run me over. I mean, I'm I'm alive. I'm in bed. I think you went a little Will Ferrell. I think you took the shirt it, it off. It was literally a tire mark, and I had to call my brothers <laughs> and go, how is a tire mark, a car tire mark on the back of my shirt? And they told me that we were getting in the car and that my foot hit the curb, and I kind of like tripped and fell on my back underneath the car, and like I, my back ended up against the car tire. <laughs> They say, you don't remember that? I was having to pick you up and put you in a limo. And I'm like, damn. Dude, you wow. fell under, underneath a car. Yeah. Not I mean, into a car, not on a car. I, under, I fell under it. You fell under it without yeah. it moving. It's not like you got sucked <laughs> under. <laughs> that's like a that's trick not shot. even possible. Yeah, that's a trick shot. <laughs> Coming off a curb, I don't know how you could do it. Uh, uh, they said I did some weird kind of flip around and then ended up with my back up against a tire. <laughs> I'm like, did you say I should go home after that? I hope those were your lines. Yeah. It's time for him to get home. I, uh, Joe DeRosa, another one of my great drinking buddies, he's got, well, he's got a buddy of his back home. Uh, you know when you have a beer and a shot, which is one of my favorite ways to start out. You know what I mean? Just sort of set the tone. And uh, his buddy calls it Bingo Bango. Oh, yeah. Which is the greatest thing ever <laughs> to me. He just go, he came, showed up one time. He had a shot and a beer, and Joe was just going like, hey, what do you got going on there? He goes, you know, bingo, bango. He just kind of went like with the shot, bingo, bango. You know? Hit this one, then I hit that one. I would think bango is the, uh, would be the shot. 
Bingo's got to be the beer, right? Well, you do the shot shot first first. and then the beer, right? Shot and the beer. Uh, So I would say bango, bingo. I was... uh, Look at me. I'm trying to rewrite it. Out on the road, and uh, this guy ordered a bunch of um, Irish car bombs, okay? That's... You drop... It's a big, thick, black stout beer... And a big glass. Yeah, it's not. And then is you it take a Guinness? A, what is it? It's, yeah, it's maybe a Guinness. Like and then, you, drop and a then sh- you take a shot of whiskey and you drop the shot glass into the beer. So the whiskey and the beer are all together. And then you chug the whole thing. Yeah. All right. Irish car bomb. Mm-hmm. Well, I got the name wrong. And then the next time I was in that city, all these guys got to. It was Philadelphia. And we all went to this like kind of cool rough philadelphia bar yeah and it was this guy who we had done the irish car bombs with and his friends so i'm trying to be like a guy and i thought it was a mudslide i thought that which is you know like like a chick drink chick drink (laughs) (laughs) so i'm trying to fit in and i went who wants to do some mudslides and uh my buddy who was the one who did the irish car bombs looked at me like the hell are you doing and i'm like no and and then now i don't want to back down i'm like oh oh you guys don't want to do mudslides huh like i keep pushing it <laughs> and they're all looking at me so i go over to the bar you know mr B- big uh big shot bartender over here seven seven set mudslides up. set them up all of us mudslides <laughs> so <laughs> they set up all these chick drinks and then next thing I know, we're doing like these light cream <laughs> shots. Oh, they all went with it? Yeah, well, because they knew I was a comedian and they were like, well, this is something this guy likes, I guess. You know, they, they, they didn't want to like undercut me. And then my friend finally took me aside and go, what the hell are you doing here, man? And I went, this is what we did last time. He goes, those were Irish car bombs, man. <laughs> Dude, that's like a reoccurring thing with you. <laughs> It's like, you're one of the smartest guys I know, but you're always saying I'm a moron and all that type of thing. You just always seem like to have these socially awkward. Do you know what? DeRosa did that. When he was in Boston hang, hang, hanging out with me, we, uh, we did the shows over at the, uh, the Wilbur. And afterwards, all my, my fucking knucklehead friends from high school, all my great friends, um, we were all drinking. And, uh, and one of my buddies was really talking to, to DeRosa. Like they just sort of hit it off. Right. And then you know he and then he walked over me once more. He goes, dude. He goes, what's up with your? He goes, what's up with your boy? I go, I don't. I go, what do you want, man? He goes, he. He goes, he, I just asked, you know, what do you want for a drink? He he wanted a white Russian. <laughs> and he goes, dude. He goes, dude. I'm all set with that guy. So I'm laughing, <laughs> thinking he's just breaking his balls. So later on in the night, after we go to leave, and I'm laughing, I go, Jerose, you know what's hilarious? When you ordered that white Russian, my buddy was breaking your ball, balls to me, saying, he goes, dude, I'm done with that guy. And, and then Joe just goes, is that why he stopped talking to me? He just, he wouldn't talk to me for the rest of the fucking night. He was dead serious, which killed me because that's such like a Boston thing where like, like that's the, like that, that alone. I imagine Philly's the same way. If you were to order like the wrong, like someone's just, yeah, I like this man. guy, this guy's cool. And then all of a sudden you order, you order something that's just a little too fucking no. soft. Yeah. Over. Right. You're dead to me. Mudslides. Mudslides. I should get together right. with him. We'll do sure. some mudslides and some white Russians, man. White, white Russian chasers. <laughs> um, all right. A bingo, bango. Little bongo, bingo. bingo. Little uh, sugar savory, sugar salt or something. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, let me uh, let me make sure that I, I, I promote this thing. I'm sure this went by and is. Yep, I knew it. 44 minutes already. Uh, I, before I get out of here, um, I, I do want to bring this up. Do you, uh, we have to talk about the time when uh, we decided, for some reason, I'm I'm, I'm going to say it was my idea that we were going to do a show together. You know, and this is of course was was I was like, not only is this guy. The funniest dude ever. He also likes to drink. I have to do a weekend with this guy. But I knew that you were playing like these giant places. I think I was doing clubs or whatever. And so I was like, I'll open for you. I don't give a shit. And then you were like, hey, why don't we just do a club? You know, the whole excuse was for us to drink. So like, why don't we just, we'll just do a club. We picked Cobb's Comedy Club in San Francisco. And it was just like, you know. For charity. For charity. And you so go, we, we well, figure we won't even make any money. It'll just be an excuse for you and I to hang. To get together and drink. And I was, I was going on first. You were going, going on second. And, uh, and, and, and that's how I found out about the St. Jude's charity, which I still donate money to. And uh, it just seemed like such a great idea in our heads. It's just like, yeah, it's, you know, 
I'm completely filthy. You're totally clean. They're gonna get the they're gonna get the total stand up white guy spectrum, spectrum here. Right. And we went up there, and I go on stage, and your crowd was looking at me like, "Who is this angry leprechaun?" <laughs> And I would say on a scale of one to ten, I'd give my set was about a four. And then you go on stage. I'm going, all right, Regan's going to, or at least Regan. I, I, I felt bad. I was like, oh, man, I kind of bombed in front of his crowd and everything. Oh, and yeah, then you, you go on stage. I remember my sister was there. You were killing her. And then all my moron friends, fans are sitting there looking at you like, he's been on stage for eight minutes. He hasn't said fuck yet. Yeah, I, don't, I didn't feel like I killed either. I mean, I, I felt like... Like you say, I, 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 I you know, I, I did fine, but I, I think we both did. Fine. I don't like to do fine. You know what I mean? Fine is not what we want. But, you know, it was like for a good cause. But, yeah, I think it was like the two disparate, if that's the right word, you know, audience. Too big a gap. Yeah. And I remember afterwards <sighs> sitting in the bar and it was sort of like the elephant in the room that we didn't want both wanted to dress that we both just sort of did fine. <laughs> and we were just sort of sitting there. It was ruining our night. <laughs> Sitting there drinking, and then finally you brought it up. You were just like, like three, three beers. You were just like, yeah. So hey, what did you? Uh, how'd you feel about that? I was like, I didn't think that went that good. And then we were sort of standing there, little buzz going like, yeah, dude, what the fuck? It was for charity. Like we said, we didn't have to be there. We almost got like pissed for a second. Then we just started laughing and realized that there was too big of a gap. Yeah. Uh, well, it was a noble cause. You know, what's weird about that too is uh, I think I forget what. And the charity ended up being American Heart Association or something like that. Or I thought we did the St. Jude thing. I it was one of those two, but oh, I remember was it the like American uh, Cancer Society something. But the, you know, we contacted my manager's office. Contacted them that we were going to just donate all the money, and like they don't say yes right away, which is weird to me. They're like, "Well, who are these guys?" And oh, I'm that's like, "Right, you know," uh, and and they want to know a little bit about us. It's like, wait a second, we're. We're giving money. We're not asking you for money. Yeah, and it was like you have to figure out how to give the money away. But you uh, know what I think that was because it was probably the way things are nowadays. Like if 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 they get associated with something with somebody, yeah, who, who controversial or yeah, whatever. Like say Donald Trump the week he said, you know, I guess evidently all Mexicans are rapists. He was saying something to that effect. And uh, if he was to donate them money, like the blowback could go on to them, like, you're, you're accepting money from a known racist? And mm. they're like, hey, we're trying to cure cancer here. Right, right, right. You know? So anyway. anyway yeah, no, I'm it was sorry. a good, was I, a probably, good time, I probably man. shouldn't have brought that up. Uh, no, it was great, man. It was, uh, it you, was a blast. And I, and I thought we had a great time that night hanging out. So uh, it was cool. Well, I would like to have done a little better. I'm not going to lie to you. It's, 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 you know, it still fucking bugs me. <laughs> I think I probably said that during my set. Like, dude, you understand? I don't have to fucking be here right now. It's like I'm, I'm working for free. Can you, <laughs> you know can, what we should you, do? Can you, can you give it up a little bit? We should do, like, uh, the opposite extreme. Like, I should perform in front of your crowd, and then I'll get a 1 out of 10, and you get a 10 out of 10, and then you could perform in front of my crowd. <laughs> and have Maybe we need, we need some of you to feature, to kind of sort of bridge. Bridge the two worlds. Yeah. Like a David Feldman. <laughs> this is un- unbelievable comedian, unbelievable joke writer, but he will out of nowhere say cunt <laughs> on stage. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Are you a sports fan, Brian? I-, I like sports, but I'm always reluctant to say I'm a sports fan because then I immediately get hit with a question I can't answer. I grew up in Miami. I'm a Dolphins fan. I like football and I like golf. You know what's the great thing about uh, you coming out of Florida? Florida has a bad reputation. For comedians, like they try to say that a bunch of hacks come out of there, and uh, then you're always the go-to guy. They're like, "Fuck you!" They're like, "Brian Regan." <laughs> They'd always name three. I forget who the other two are, but every city, I think, kind of just has three good ones. Every state mm. at this point. I mean, there's only like the top hundred, right? Comedians. You got fifty states. You got there you two. Go. You got two, two, two from state. each state. Yeah. Who are the two from Rhode Island? <laughs> 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 That's funny. Everybody's got that. Oh, I was trying to steer the conversation towards sports because I've been defending my New England Patriots as they've literally become like the fucking Antichrist, uh, the Antichrist, however, however you're supposed to say it. And just now at this point, like we just after the nine millionth thing that we've been accused of, of course, just accused. Nothing has ever been proven other than that we cheated for one game in 2007 where we filmed the Jets. 
And right. then a bunch of people were like, well, then your Super Bowl championship shouldn't count. It's like, yeah, they should because it wasn't against the rules for us to be doing what everybody else was fucking doing. We just ignored them and we cheated against the Jets and we got ratted out by fucking Mangini. Other than that, it's just been a bunch of fucking hearsay. And I was just hoping uh, you would either 100% agree with me or 100% disagree with me and we get into an epic argument about it. <laughs> but you're, well, into, you're into golf. Do you watch tennis at all? Did you see Serena lost? I saw that she lost, yeah. That, well, that was devastating to me. I uh, hate that's why I hate watching tennis and golf. Those are the two most brutal it's all on you. It's like doing it's like doing stand up on a late night talk show. If you go out and fucking bomb, it's like you're out there with somebody else. It's just a hundred percent you right. trying to keep your emotions in check. Like the first time I actually sat and I watched a, a, a golf tournament wire to wire, I watched the Masters in I think two thousand seven. It was when the wheels came off with, with uh, Kenny Perry. Oh. And I was watching that whole thing, rooting for this guy, and he's never won it, and he's going to win his first major, blah, blah, blah. The guy was like three fucking holes away. The wheel, and I, I saw his kids go from tears of joy to, to devastation, like the guy died. And I later heard that he, when he lost, he didn't even talk to his family. I'm sure he said a couple of words. He just got in his car and just started driving. Mm. And I remember being, as a sports fan, so upset that I, I actually sat and watched that happen to a fellow human being. I felt horrible. I felt like I was looking at, a, at a, an execution. It's like yeah. you're watching an execution almost, you know. Um, but, I mean, there are similarities between that and what we do. You know, it's like uh, you, you have a horrible set somewhere, especially on TV, you know. But at least, at least you can blame the crowd on some level. You can stand, you know, not on TV, but in like a uh, at a comedy club. Ah, oh, fuck you, people! You can do something to, <laughs> to try to do something to, to at least have some well, sort of. I get you're better at that than I am. Man. Minor victory in uh -huh. it. Do they just have to sit there and 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 as people are commentating? who don't nearly, would never have the will or the skill to do what they're doing and just be sitting there going, oh, the wheels are just coming off right now. You can see he's, he's just visibly upset. He's perspiring. And they're just <laughs> sitting there just, just giving play by play. Nobody, like, when you bomb as a comic as bad as it gets, there's nobody giving play by play, doing that mystery science theater thing as you're doing it. That's all I'm saying. So I, I, I like golf. I actually love tennis, but to, I, I like watching somebody... I went to the. I was in France this year, and I went to the uh, the French Open finals, and I was so excited to see Djokovic win the French, and then he would have won on all four all surfaces, and he would have become part of this short list. And he won the first set, and after he won it, he, he looked over at his coach, and he fucking did like that that Tiger Woods fist pump, and I was like, oh man, this guy is dialed in. He's fucking dialed in. He lost the next three straight. Oh man, and it was just it was, and it was great to see that Warinka guy win his first one. But that's one thing that is so great about sports is if you do win a championship or you do win something, you have that eureka moment where you can jump up and down and celebrate and hug people. Most jobs don't have yeah, no. that line in the sand moment, <laughs> you know, where you can Three. just go. Yeah, 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 you know, you go to work uh, nine to five and you do what you're supposed to do. You, you don't have some moment where you're just <laughs> jumping up and down on your desk, you know. Um, they so I that envy that. People. They should do that for people every Friday when it's like 459 and they're like, well, you know, do that one minute left in the period like they used to do in the Boston Garden. Yeah, and then that would be good. The whole place, A countdown. Yeah, from 10. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, and then, ah! people, people got the goggles on, spraying champagne and all that shit. And, and then you go home for the yeah. weekend. Like, right, we, we did it. You know, we had a good week at work. That might actually be a morale booster, especially for like some shit fucking job. I, I think that would be a great idea. Yeah, you have your week, your weekly countdown, man. You send everybody home in a good mood. Absolutely. Well, dude, we got we got I got to wrap this thing up. I got to do some more advertising here, but it's it's been an absolute pleasure as as a fan of the art of stand up comedy to watch as much as your career as, as I've seen and to actually you know when you came down to the comedy store, comedy store, the comedy works that that is still and always will be one of the biggest highlights of my career, and uh, 
I will definitely be there. What, what is the date of when you're uh, shooting it here? I got uh, September 26th, a Saturday, um, nine o'clock um, on Eastern time, and I don't know what time it'll be on all the other time zones, but uh, nine o'clock Eastern on Comedy Central. Bill, the you're the first best, man. Live I'm- stand-up comedy special ever. Uh, first live special on Comedy, Comedy Central. Central. I think ever. HBO has done one. I think Seinfeld did a live special on HBO. But this is Comedy Central's first one. So That's, yeah. It's incredible. Thank you. It's incredible. Hey, listen, man. I think you're great. I've always... Loved your comedy. I've always loved your perspective. I like love cursing. your cursing. Yeah, I love your cursing. <laughs> <laughs> I love your drinking. Um, yes. No, man. Um, and so I just wanted to return the compliment, man. You're, that's why we wanted to come down to see you because you're great. Well, I appreciate that. And next time you are boozing, I don't play Texas Hold'em or golf. I'll learn the Texas Hold'em. Golf, I can keep it on the course. Hit me up, dude. I'll fly in. I'll fly in. I'll tell my wife I'm doing a corporate gig. <laughs> just, I just won't show up with any money afterwards. <laughs> All right. Please tune in September 26th at uh, 9 p.m. on Comedy Central Eastern Time to watch uh, their first live stand-up comedy special with, with one of the greatest comedians of all time, Brian Regan. Thank you so much for coming on, Brian. Thank you, Bill. All right. What's up, everybody? And welcome back to the Anything Better podcast. And this is the week two NFL edition. Um, Before we get started, we have to obviously shout out our great sponsor. It's the Bet MGM app, guys. Um, Place your first bet at Bet MGM Sportsbook Wager through Bet MGM Sportsbook mobile um, application of at least $10, guys. $10, $10, you will receive $200 instantly in additional winnings, regardless of the wager's outcome. I believe the bonus code is BUR200, uh, BUR200. B-U-R-R All right, how to get this offer? It's very easy, four easy steps. You download the BetMGM Sportsbook app uh, on your Android, your iPhone. Okay, uh, visit BetMGM.com. Sign up, deposit at least 10 bucks, guys. 10 bucks into your newly created account. Place a wager in the amount of at least 10 at standard odds price, which is a qualifying bet. Once you have placed a qualifying bet, you'll receive $200, guys. $200 in bonus bets, regardless of the outcome of your wager. It's that simple. Use bonus code BURB200. Uh, guys, also, it's not too late for the survivor pool. Uh, even if you missed week one, you could go back and uh, you can sign up for the Survivor Pool and you could get in and go to uh, the promotions tab on the BetMGM Sportsbook account and access Survivor Pool Challenge, free to play, create an entry, choose a team each week. You know how the Survivor Pool works. The team just has to win. And uh, if if the team keeps winning, you go every week until the end and you will get a prize. So you could still do that. It's still available uh, now, not for the 250000 like it was, but you could still get prizes and join now. So do all that. Bonus code a bur two hundred, and uh, get get at least ten bucks in, and you get up to two hundred in in your bets. So there you go. Um, what could I say? Week one. What can we say? Bill and I both went two and two. It's a tough. It was a tough week. You know, me and Bill had some good picks. Bill hit that Dolphins thing. I hit the the Lions thing, and the you know the Giants. And you also, your Jags was the lock of the week. The Jags was the lock of the week, and uh, I went to the Giants game. And Aaron Rodgers went down. If he didn't go down, you know, who Boy, knows? I but talk- I also said I also said the Bills were going to win. I like the Bills to win. Um, I went back the last second, Paul. The whole fucking time I was taught for a month, I was saying Aaron Rodgers is going to come down fourth quarter, come back, blah blah. How fucking awful is that? How much fun did all football fans lose? Because they won't let him play on natural grass, Paul. The field's getting the fucking blame now. Dude, I got to be honest, both New York teams, the Giants go down on that first drive looking great. They get to the 15-yard line. Saquon is is doing his thing. I go, oh, my God, look at us. We're ready for the NFC Championship. We're going to go prance right in. And then a blocked field goal for a touchdown and a beating to the likes of which I haven't seen. I've never seen a building know it was over and have it be over that fast in a blink of an eye. It was fucky. My Jones- favorite thing was your Instagram stories. <laughs> Paul was going to do the, he was going to insta, you know, fucking do the whole story about him at the game. You you didn't get past the fucking national anthem. I did too. It started the, yeah. with the national anthem, the American flag, and then you were on radio silence. I was waiting for one thing to cheer for and put on the Instagram story, and it never came. 
Uh, or the lack of traffic at the end of the game. Maybe you could have filmed that cruising through the fucking Lincoln Tunnel. <laughs> Dude, Dude, that reminded me of that fucking KCU Georgia Bulldogs game we went to. That Dude. fucking leaky roof. And both everybody's like, well, I was like, everybody's taking Georgia, man. They're getting all these points. Let's take TCU. They always they always put up a good fight. Those fucking assholes. Dude, I got to be honest with you, man. That was such a bad loss. You know me. I try to find the positive and the silver lining. But if your offensive line is that bad week one against a division rival at home, dude, I just don't know. Like I, that kid was running for his life, nowhere to go, no one to throw to the, the, the Dallas Cowboys were joking like Oprah. Did you see them? The Dallas Cowboys were joking like Oprah on the thing. And he just goes, and you get a sack and you get a sack and you get it. Cause they sacked us that many times. They're literally on the That's side. That's a good joke to do with somebody who's not in your division. I know. I, I wouldn't like... do that if they, you got to fucking play him again. That's that's uh, unnecessarily cunty. Not to be the white guy here, because I did hear this guy out during the Raiders game. Uh, when uh, Was it Ja'Cory Myers, whatever? Jacoby Myers gets a touchdown, and then he gets like a penalty for taunting. He goes, when you make a big play, you have to control your emotions. I mean, what is that? Uh, yeah. That doesn't even make sense. When you hit the lottery, you got to sit on those emotions. You know that D-back was talking shit to him the whole fucking way down, and then he beats him, gets a touchdown. He was over him for two seconds, and they throw the flag. Yeah. Ah, uh, they've been doing it always since back Jim McMahon, the no-fun league. <laughs> I don't know, man. And then they were going, we want them to quit by halftime, they're saying on the side. Ho listen, hopefully the Giants wake up, and that's it. Aaron Rodgers thing, absolutely fucking brutal. Jets still win. And everybody in New York, and, and everybody in New York is delusional, Bill. Now the Jets are going to still win the Super Bowl and the Giants are done. And it actually... Nobody's could... saying that. Dude. No one's saying the Jets are going to win the Super Bowl. No, no. They're, they're happy. They're going, oh, the Jets, it's not over. We got the, the kid did good. It's like, uh, relax. Can we talk about the tragedy of fucking Aaron Rodgers? Ugh. I mean, Jesus. I don't think I've ever been so fucking amped up for that. This guy with all the experience going up against the claymation kid there out there fucking with the Buffalo Bills. You know? Yes. And just all over. What did the Jets do, Paul? They have fucking cursed. Four plays, dude, into his career. Four. Gone. Done. Over. ACL tear. I mean, Achilles tear. Unbelievable, you think, man. You think he's done? You think he's done for that? I mean, some people say career ending. I mean, some people yeah. say that's an obvious career ender, but what do you think? He says no. He says, I'll be back next year for the opener. I think he's going to try to fight back. But, dude, 39 years old, complete tear. The Achilles is real tough. I mean, I mean, I'll tell you what sucks is fucking HDTV. Like, now somebody like zoomed in, saw the explosion <laughs> inside his calf. It's like, uh, they told me it. Ha I, I get it. Because people want to be like, that's definitely an Achilles. That's, that's definitely, a you're not a doctor. Yeah. You're not a doctor. That, that's where the Achilles is. You don't know that it's definitely an Achilles. You have no fucking idea. How much no. slow motion footage have you watched of Achilles exploding? Exactly. I want to know your opinion on gambling Week two of the NFL. Week one's a mystery. What's going on? Who's going to be what? Do you find week two easier or harder than week one? I find week two just as hard. I don't think it's set in stone until three or four, to be honest. I, like I, don't, I don't know who the Giants are. I don't know if they're going to go in against a bad Arizona team and do anything. I don't know if that offensive line just quit. I don't know. So, But I tell you what I do know. I do know what my first pick this week's going to be. And okay. I tell you what. I tell you what. <laughs> Paulie's feeling it. Give him the rock. Uh, this is a this is a the only reason I'm taking this game is because it's three points, and it is actually a difficult game, but it's a game that has to happen. Okay, now let me tell you something. When Paul Verzi picks it, do you want to know why I beat the book two years in a row? <laughs> No, no, I'm going to tell you why. The reason why I beat the book two years in a row is because even if I lose the bet, I take the bet knowing I could sleep at night. I could sleep after it, okay? That's how I do it. I could sleep knowing that the, the Los Angeles Chargers who lost week one, listen to me, <laughs> lost week one, okay, have to win this game. Justin Herbert, one of the only quarterbacks that played good last week. They cannot go 0-2, and, and I think they're a better team than the Titans are. I'm going to take the Chargers 
I guess are there lane? Wait, who's Andrew? By the way, this is this is the Titans are getting three, correct? Yeah, Chargers are minus three. I'm gonna take the Chargers minus three, not going zero and two. They should win that game by a field goal at least. I'm gonna take Justin Herbert and the Chargers bouncing back in Tennessee. Hard week of practice. Can't go zero and two. That's my first pick. I like it. All right, uh, I like the I like the Chargers getting points. I thought they were laying. I didn't like that. I like the I like that bet a lot. All right, I'll tell you this right now, Paul. Week one is not your whole fucking season. For some reason, the Jets with that amazing defense are getting nine points in Dallas. I think Dallas is out there. They're going to titty bars. They're sucking their own dicks a little bit. They're doing their Oprah impressions and all of that. You know, they went up against a weak offensive line, having your boy from Duke running all around like he can't find his fucking calculus goddamn textbook there. I'm going to take the Jets, get nine points. Paul, I'm up nine nothing before it even starts. Who am I? I'm with that having de- a little fucking stuffed pretzel. I-, I love that pick with that defense. I love that pick. And I do I- too. And the Cowboys are the fucking Cowboys until they're not. They haven't done shit since fucking uh, before Bill Clinton put his cigar. Not in the humidor, Paul. Not in the humidor. <laughs> <laughs> no, he put it in the human, human humidor. Door. The human door. All right. Uh, the human I- door. I love that pick. I love that pick. The Jets get that defense. Oh, my God. Can you imagine if she ever cut you off in traffic and you were giving a shit? Shut the fuck up, you fucking human humidor. You human door. <laughs> you human door. Oh, uh, it's great. Um, oh. All right. It's a weird week, man. It's a weird week. But here we go. You, am I going to do it? Of course. I, I don't know, Paul. I never hear Paul. Paul usually likes the weeks. Here's Probably the brings deal. the sunshine. I don't know. This I, is this is a kind of a, a tough. I don't love week. this. I don't love this week. Sometimes I see the lines usually, and I'm like, oh, I got my three or four. I don't like this week. I think it's I think it's it's weird. Um, it's like seeing a pretty girl fall, and then she's drinking red wine, and she smiles at you, and her teeth are gray. And he goes, ah. <laughs> All right. Well, look. The Giants lost forty to nothing at home. They got completely embarrassed. The entire city is shitting on the Giants. Everybody's talking about the Jets. I saw Saquon's face during the press conference, and he looked, dude, he looked, you know, here's what I'm going to say. We're going against one of the worst teams in the NFL, dude. We're playing the Arizona Cardinals, new coach. They're all over the place. It's not a good organization right now as much as they were good to us. I got to take the Giants week two, bouncing back. Uh minus five and a half. I think the Giants should beat the Cardinals by at least a touchdown. And if not, the Giants Wait, season. Giants are laying five and a half? You get Giants five. Are, Giants, no, Giants are laying five and a half. Oh. They're I playing. had that down on my card is plus five and a half. I'm like, that's the biggest gift I've ever seen. And But out of respect, Paul, that's how much I love you. Out of respect, yeah. I'm not jumping on that. I know Paul. I know Paul's going to take the Giants. I Look. If if the Giants are going to lose like that week one and then go to Arizona and lose, I got to see it. I got to see it. So um, it's like when you when you, it's like Andrew, it's like waiting for the flop. I got I got a decent two card. I got to see the flop. I got to see them go. I got to see them lose to this team if it's going to happen. And I don't think it's gonna. I'm going to take the Giants to win that game by a touchdown and have a big bounce back week. Giants minus five and a half. I'm going to tell you this right now: if the Giants lose that game outright, Paul. I'm sending you a charcuterie board. All right? And a, and a fucking new Knicks hat. I'm going to get you all set up for October. Because I don't like seeing a sad Paul Verzi. And if you, uh, guys, if you guys get blown out and then lose it, I, 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 just, I don't know. Um, all right, Paul, I got to tell you, once you took, I, had, I, I did the Jets pick, and I had the Giants on my card, even though I had it the wrong way. Once you took that, all of a sudden, it's starting to look like Slim Pickett's here. Um, great actor, by the way, Slim Pickens. Um, I, I think I'm going to take, this is a weird one, Paul. I'm going to take the Colts getting one. That's a good on one. On the road against the Texans. I just feel like the Colts are one of those weird ass teams. No, the Colts aren't getting one though. The Texans are getting one. Colts Am are laying. I like dyslexic? Did I read everything wrong? The Colts are laying one? 
The team that's second. All right, team- fuck all that yeah. then. Are the Pats getting three at home against the Dolphins? Did I write that one down right? Yeah, the Pats are getting three at home. All right, Dolphins coming off a big, big fucking win against the San Diego Chargers. All the fucking analysts have the Pats dead and buried. You put up a great fight against the fucking Eagles. Um, you know, I'm gonna take uh I'm gonna take the Pats getting three. Bill Belichick, I think he's gonna frustrate them enough. I like this new fucking Patriots offense, even though I didn't see a second of the game. I, I didn't watch any highlights, Paul, just from what I heard. Um uh, we gotta win this game. And the fact that you guys were kind of getting, you know. Getting it started, getting it to you, handed to you by the Eagles, and you guys came back, and Mac Jones had that. You guys figured something. Yeah, I heard. I heard there was a little questionable call there with the fucking uh, with the ball or whatever. Uh, the, dude, the, the, the placing of the ball. Dude, you guys, Belichick and the defense. The Patriots is a team you bet. You just can't bet against. So I Belich- am home getting points, but the Dolphins, man, they have on historically, Paul. I can tell you this, Paul. Here's a gift for you. Whoever wins this game, Pat's Dolphins. Next time they bet. Next time they play, bet the opposite. They go fucking one and one every year. Dude, the Patriots are so scary. When Belichick retires, I'm still not touching it. Yeah, uh, I mean, Paul, let's let's be honest. The dance is over. All right. Now we're coming. We're coming right now. We got a. Uh, I'm trying to figure pick a celebrity that has a sibling that won't be insulting. <laughs> I got it. Here's my pick. Here's my pick. I just it just hit me now. It just hit me now. The Detroit Lions are at home after that unbelievable win in Kansas City. They are playing the Seahawks. They got to win the game by 5 or more. I think they're flying. I think the Seahawks are due for a bad season. I think the Geno Smith Honeymoon of last year is over. I think Sneaky Pete is on the decline. I think that the Lions are absolutely still going to just take off this year and have a monster year, and I don't see the Seahawks stopping that. That crowd's going to be going nuts after coming back from Kansas City, and they got to win by six or more. Five, I'm sorry. I'm taking the Lions laying four and a half points in Detroit. This is their season, and I don't think the Seahawks are the team that's going to stop them. The Lions go 2-0, and and they win this game by 10 points. Jesus. I look at that game the exact opposite. That's a trap game. All right. That's a, I think that's a trap game, and I think uh, I like Geno and, and Pete Carroll. Pete, you know what Pete Carroll's doing right now? He's laying off Detroit pizza. He's a maniac. He's chewing that fucking gum. He's taking the stairs instead of the escalator. And I, I don't, I don't, I didn't like four and a half. Was it four and a half? Four and a half. I like your confidence though, because I do like the Lions. Um, I'm worried. Of, I am worried about that game. All right, Paul, I'm going to go the other way here. I'm going to go the other way. I think the, uh, I like the Eagles at home getting six and a half versus the Vikings. I don't think they're going to win the game. But I think uh, I think they're strong enough. And every year, everybody gets all fucking amped up about the Vikings. They're gonna do this, Paul. They're gonna do that, and they never do. Just this, this. I mean, a lot of this shit, Paul, is I'm going on his history. Oh, tonight, tonight, you mean tonight's game? Eagles, oh, is Eagles tonight's are late. Game? Yeah, Paul. Why don't I fucking get a winner or a loss out of the way? All the right. Vikings are getting six and a half. Huh? No. Vikings are getting six and a half. Yes, Vikings yeah. are getting six and a half. Dude, what? What the fuck did I do this week? My whole fucking card is upside down. I don't. I don't know who shot. Are the Chiefs getting fucking three and a half? Or the fucking playing. Jags getting three and a half? The Jags. Jags are getting three and a half. It's always the home team that's second that that the line applies to. Whichever team is in bold print is the line is two. No, I thought the bold print meant it was fucking. They were a home team. It is their home, and then that's the line that yeah. applies to them. All right, are the Packers getting one or laying one? Uh, they're laying one. The Packers are minus one, laying one. I wrote everything down backwards, and I still thought it was a tough week. But I also <laughs> picked <laughs> game. I'm also picking games plus one, minus one. So, right, I got the Jets. I got no. I got I got the Jets, the Colts, and the Pats. Right? Look at yeah. me going the old AFC East here. Um. The Vikings are getting six and a half. 
they don't do very well in prime. Kirk Cousins doesn't do very well in prime time, and the Eagles right now. I mean, their defense you, like their second. Thursday league. Night, I hate fucking Thursday night games. I, I everybody's all banged up and shit. I'm gonna take the Chiefs. The Chiefs. The Chiefs lay in three and a half against the fucking Jags. Um, they're a Super Bowl team. They got they, you know they that was a pretty big loss last week. Uh, as much as I like Trevor Noah down there in Jaguar, which he's been doing on the Daily Show and on Sundays. I mean, when does that kid sleep, Paul? When does that kid sleep? Trevor Lawrence. All right. The the fucking, what did I call him last year, Paul? The good-looking zombie? What was he? Oh, dude, you said something. It was great. I forget what he was. There's something about him, dude. If that guy's not AI, I don't know who is. Um, yeah, I'm going to take the Chiefs. I mean, come on, dude. It, it's, it's fucking Pat. Patrick Mahomes. Is Kelsey coming back? I don't even need half the fucking information I need this week. I don't even know. I think, I think Kelsey is coming. What? He's expected to play. Sorry. Yeah, I think Kelsey's back. All right. All right. Okay. Jake the Snake. I'm trying to read your face here. You just say he's expect, expected to play. I'm getting Yeah, I can tell Jake league. likes to pick. I don't know. I'm getting I'm getting that Trevor Lawrence vibe from him. I don't know what he's thinking. Dude, if Trevor Lawrence ever plays in a fucking celebrity poker game it's going to be over first of all you're going to, both of us would be enamored by that that fucking lion's mane of hair that he has you know and then yeah, he, you're gonna, you're, you're, he doesn't need to wear sunglasses like what in the fuck is this kid thinking <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right well so who are you going with you're going with the uh, the chiefs i got the chiefs paul i got the jets fucking getting nine I got the Colts laying one. I got the Pats getting three, and I got the Chiefs laying three and a half. Look that's at this, a, Paul. Listen, Sunglass that's Sunglasses coming on. It's over. I'll be honest with you. I like your – this week is really tough. I like your picks. Now, I got – so far, I got three favorites. You know, sometimes Paulie looks at us, looks at the board, and I, I can't lay off a favorite. But That was old Paulie, though. I'm going to take – likes the, the old Paulie used to root for the landlord. The new Polly, the new Polly's rooting for the tenant. Ah, uh, you know the landlord built it up though. You deserve some respect. I got three favorites right now in the Chargers, Giants, and Lions. And the one game I see here where a team is getting some points. And Bill mentioned something about a trap game with the Lions, but I think the trap game could be the Buffalo Bills. The Buffalo Bills are giving the Raiders eight points. I know it's in Buffalo, and Buffalo's coming off of a heartbreaker. I think everybody's taking Buffalo. I think the Raiders know it. And I'm just going to take the Raiders on the road, big dogs. You know, I'm not saying that Buffalo loses the game. I just like the eight points. So I'm going to take the Las Vegas Raiders getting eight points in Buffalo. I, I know you don't like it. Everyone thinks it's going to be a blowout. No, 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 no. I mean, that that game I stayed away from, that fucking eight points. Uh, dude, I learned my lesson last year with backdoor covers. I'm not fucking yeah. doing that shit anymore. So, you know, yeah, I think what you're saying. Like, I think a safe bet is the Bills are going to win the game, but they're not going to cover. And I also think that they will be covering in the third quarter, and then what? then they'll just fucking do what they always do. Yeah, this could be yeah, this could be a game where the Bills are winning by, you know, the Bills are winning by 10 points late and the Raiders do something to try to come back and and at least at least get the you know, you know, Hey, Jimmy show. G, Jimmy G wins, dude. He's a winner. Look, the, the guy puts points on the board, Paul. You know, listen, two reasons. The first team I ever played for, I was cornerback for the Raiders uh when I played little league football, Pee Wee League, whatever they call it. And uh, Jimmy G's Italian. You know, you got a good looking oh. Italian kid from Las Vegas coming in there. What are you going to do? He's getting eight points. Feels disrespected. You know, uh, he's going to eat his grandma's pasta the night before. She's going to say, not, Jimmy. He's not, not familiar with that stadium. He played there with the Patriots. Yep. Yeah. You know, and listen, it's the eight points. So there you go. I have the Chargers given three. The Giants giving five and a half, the Lions giving four and a half, and the Raiders getting eight. That looks like I can go 0 and four or four and oh or anything in hey, between. Paul, week two. Week two is like yeah, that's a that's a difficult one. I, I think this is what I have. I have the Jets getting nine. Yeah. I got the Chiefs laying three and a half. I got the Pats getting three, and I got the Colts laying one. Right. 
That's what uh, I got, Paul. Okay, now we got to do the Monday night special. Uh, there's two, right? There's two games. Two games, yeah. Um, Can I ask you a question? I, I've been out of the country. Where the fuck do I watch the games now? ESPN. Uh, uh, Sunday, uh, yeah, I Monday night. I thought I had nights. to get YouTube. Is YouTube just for the package? That's just if you want to watch every single game. Dude, you know what I love what the NFL did? Is they make me get direct TV and stick the fucking thing on the side of my house, right? And then when they switch to YouTube, they're like, hey, no more. You don't, you know, they even say no more. They don't. And you don't have to stick a satellite dish on the side of your house. It's like, well, you fucking assholes. You're the reason why I have one. Now what am I supposed to do with it, Paul? It's like an old laptop just sitting there. All the young people walking by my house snickering. Look at him. He's got a satellite dish. What are you uh, watching the NFL in fucking 2019? <laughs> hey, here's another thing, Paul. When I was over in... Uh, in Europe, you know what they banned over there? That fucking turf that we use here too, with with the recycled tires in it. There's lead uh, in those tires. Oh shit! And they found that a high rate of cancer with their their football players, soccer players over there, specifically with the goalies diving. Now there's no fucking way the NFL hasn't heard about that, Paul. How long do you think it's going to take them over here, where we feed cows to other fucking cows? And propaganda on CNN and Fox News. How fucking long before these corporate cunts dig up the thing and, and you know? How long, Paul? <laughs> Do I sound like yeah. a fringe candidate? I love anytime you stick up for little people, regular people. You're a fringe candidate. <laughs> Bill, you are on one today, dude. This I is had a coffee and I'm jet lagged. I got the lines backwards. I mean, I don't even know. I don't know who's shot. I don't know who's not. I'm like fucking Chris Penn and Reservoir Dogs. Uh, rest his soul. And you know something? You tell me what really happened. Yeah, well, that's probably why you're going to go 4 and 0 oh, because you're just I'm on one of those. I'm standing here like Sam's hot car lot outside. <laughs> just because you say it doesn't make it so. Uh... Polly, stop pointing that gun at my dad. I gotta watch that again. I fucking love that movie. Uh, I'm acting like a fucking professional. There's two games, Bill. There's the Saints and Panthers and the Browns. And by the way, the Browns defense, man, they're really good. Deshaun Watson's really good. The Browns are no joke. They're so, at, yeah. they're they at like Steelers. They're at football games. Giggling like a bunch of school. <laughs> Sorry. All right, let's go. Um... So yeah, Brown Steelers. It's minus uh, uh, Brown Brown Steelers are getting to Steelers. Are what are they laying like half? Who should we have taken? The Steelers. Uh, the Steelers are getting two and a half at home after a bad loss. A bad loss to the 49ers. Thirty eight. Who are they playing? The over under. It's a, a division Brown? rival. Browns. Browns. Browns ah, looked good man. last week. Steelers Dude, lost to the Niners. Go fuck itself. I fucking hate the Browns when it comes to money. You know, the Steelers. It's the Steelers are the Browns' older brother. Okay? When are they going to knock him out, Paul? If not now. But they got Deshaun Watson, right? He just got out of a massage parlor. His balls are light. He's, he's, he's on his toes. I like the, <laughs> I like the Browns. <laughs> uh, yeah. Listen, I think what we should do is we should do a Kenny Pickett touchdown. Uh, Deshaun Watson. Actually, how about a Nick Chubb touchdown? Nick Chubb is playing, Jake? Yes. Yes, he is. Um, you like the Browns to win the game by a field goal, Bill? Yeah, I think the uh I think the Steelers, I don't know. I see them beating the Browns later on this season. I just I I, I don't know. Um at some point, dude, the Browns just gotta fucking get this 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 fucking team off their back. I, you know what? I think Deshaun Watson, the Steelers haven't had to deal with a guy like that. And their right. offense was looking pretty anemic last week on all the games I didn't see. I'm going to go with the Browns. All right. I'm going to roll with you with that. So we'll go Browns, and then we got to pick two others. And then we got, hey, Paul, yes, 30, top, 38 and a half. 38 Paul. and a half I don't want to touch. All right. So how about this? Because this, th this can happen, and this could be money for people. And a lot of people, listen, there's nothing me and Bill could do about last week. We didn't know the guy's leg was going to blow out four plays in. Everyone's going, hey, that Monday night special blew up pretty quick. Yeah, well, it did. I don't know what you want me to tell you. Um, 
What I kind like of the- a miserable cunt writes that, Paul, on a fucking injury? I can see if you're giving a shit. If it's a fucking injury. Dude, we both went hey, to- you know, that two- guy's date in the hotel blew up pretty quickly, yeah. too, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. We both went two and two, and guys are like, hey, guys, rough week one, huh? I'm going, not really. We're 500. Not really. Did you have the That's Jags? It- you fucking idiot. Did you have the the lions and the dolphins? Shut up. Oh, what are we, we're, we're yelling at robots. They're probably bots. It's probably not even a person. What about uh, Najee Harris to run one in? I think Kenny Pickett throws his first touchdown as, as a Steelers starter this year at home. Right? Uh-huh. All right. And then what do you want to do? You want to do. He threw Nick- two interceptions last week. You think he throws another one this week? No. I think he'll throw a touchdown at home, dude. They went against the 49ers, and they got embarrassed. They got embarrassed by the 49ers, dude. I think he throws a touchdown at home. I still like the Browns the 49ers to win. 49ers are the rich kids this year. They went out and they fucking paid everybody. They they, they yeah. went George Stein, Jim, Paul, gang, like this, them. Who are you? When did we sign? We signed you? All right, yeah. Here's his here's fucking, <laughs> this $4 million. Get the fuck out of here. Go to um, Six Flags. Browns? Kenny Pickett to throw one. And do, what do you uh, think? Do Nick Chubb, Chubb, Nick yeah. Chubb anytime touchdown. I think that that's the winner. All right, I'm going to go with that, Paul, because I didn't see anything the first fucking week. And uh, I'm, I'm fucking, I got to go get a coffee because I got to stay up now so I, I can get back, I can get acclimated. Um, All right. So then there you have it. So our picks are Bill. Bill, you got Bill's picks. You got my picks. I got the Jets plus nine. I got the Colts minus one. I got the Pats plus three. I got the Chiefs plus three and a half. I got the Chargers minus three. I got the Giants minus five and a half. I got the Lions minus four and a half. And I got the Raiders plus eight. I like Are- that, Paul. That sounds like a balanced dance card to me, even though you you got three favorites. I like it. There's something about those teams. I, I don't know. Bill, um, it was Chiefs minus three and a half. You said it right. Minus before, three and a half. Whatever. What, what, yeah, just listen, just, listen, Paul. I just Paul, don't want I mean, anybody. I don't want anybody to complain. And you know? who am I? Who am I? I'm just a fucking guy sliding into sixty, wearing his sunglasses. Uh, and the Monday night special. Monday night special, guys. Uh, we got the we got the Browns minus two and a half. We got, we got the Ramones. We got Kenny Pinkett to throw a touchdown for the Steelers. And we have a Nick Chubb anytime touchdown for our Monday night special. Go to the BetMGM app. You could click on, you could see mine and Bill's beautiful faces on that bet. You click on the bet, you put it in, and there you go. $10. And bet responsibly. Yes. Bet, Don't of be course. We always at a say. level that could end your marriage. Yeah. The next thing you know, you're standing outside a train station looking for a dick to suck. Um, all right, guys, that's our picks for week two. Make sure you go to the BetMGM app. You put in a minimum of ten dollars and you will get up to two hundred dollars in wagers, even if the one if the first one loses. Okay, use bonus code BUR200, B-U-R-R-200. You could still go to the survivor pool. Okay, it's not going to be for the, the quarter of a million, but you could still get in and get prizes on that as well. Same code BUR200. All right, and again, download the app. Very easy. Ten bucks, you get two hundred. Bet responsibly. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy week two, everybody. Enjoy week two. Hopefully, the Giants bounce back, and I'm in a better uh, I'm, I'm in a better mood next week. Um, I'm loving the Pats to get their first win outright. I like that too. All right. Now, if I can just find some kid thirty years younger than me that can show me how to sign up on YouTube, I'll be watching the game. We should do something, Andrew, where if one week Bill goes 4-0 and and I go 4-0, and if this show goes 8-0, and we got to do something where we send fans a T-shirt or something. I mean, we got to do something. Somebody's getting merch. But then something. we lose. That's going to cost us a bunch of money, Paul. We ain't going to go. Dude, if we go 0-8. Oh, if we go 0-8. 0-8. Oh, you said 8-0. Oh, I thought you said 8-0. No, 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 no I did. did. No, I did. I said 8-0. If I go 8-0, but... no, I got to buy fucking 10,000 people a T-shirt? <laughs> Hey, that doesn't make any fucking sense. Hey, BetMGM's got my no. You know, I we I figured something. You know, maybe we throw, maybe we give everybody a little five dollar credit. La- last season, I bought a pack of football pencils, the classic football pencils. So maybe, uh, maybe we'll give those away. I don't know. There Bill, you, you can sign the back of them. <laughs> this is this is why you don't brainstorm on a fucking podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Paul, that uh, is just such. 
your fucking Italian and Greek blood there. <laughs> Listen, everybody gets know, everybody gets a watch. Know, <laughs> you ain't know you're making all of this fucking money. You're gonna fucking blow all of it, fucking hooking people up and tipping doormen. Oh, that, hey, Paul, that why don't so we just buy a team? Why don't we just yeah. buy a team, Paul? <laughs> oh, that's great. All right, guys. Uh, enjoy football this week. Tonight's game, we didn't touch, but tonight's game is Vikings-Eagles. I'll be on a live stream for the first score of that tonight. And you know, uh, I'm a dreamer. This is when the lighters used to come out, Paul. But my heart is gold. <clears throat> Bill, needs, Bill needs some, a nap. Um, I do. All right, guys, that's it. Enjoy. Enjoy week two. We will be back next week uh, with more picks. Take care.